So, uh, so on uh, Monday of this week, I received uh, an email from Fred Geisel, who states in a letter that he cannot agree with the dry well uh, alternative, as it would involve just as much work, and it would also, in his opinion, would not work. So he's going to look for a contractor uh, to help out the homeowner. And I, it is, as of this moment, I haven't heard from Fred or Mr. Shu uh, to update me further on that. So we're still where we are. Okay. Just waiting. So shall we make a motion to continue? Make a motion to continue. Second. All those in favor? Next item on the agenda is a notice of intent 270-0725, 10 Gregory Lane, Matt 50, lots 41, Sing. And this is a new um, proposal, right? Uh, yes, it is. Okay, so the hearing is now opened and being conducted concurrently under the authority of the Mass Wetlands Protection Act, Mass General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40 is amended, and the Reading General Bylaws, Section 7.1. A hearing will be conducted in the following manner. <laughs> Applicant presents proposal. Commission will receive reports from its administrators. Technical advisor to other time departments. Commission will address questions and comments to the applicant and the public will be given an opportunity to ask questions, um, which should be directed to the chair. And when you do that, please give your name and address before your comments. Um, and everyone should have signed in an attendance sheet in the back of the room. And at this time, I'd like to introduce the members of the Conservation Commission, starting on my right. David Panet. Anika Scanlon. Rebecca Longley, Chair. Michael Flynn, Vice Chair. Chuck Trioni, Conservation Administrator. Okay. Great. So, I'll go ahead, Chuck. Yeah. Start. So, um, I just want to give kind of a rundown. Sure. So the parcel is a uh, 1.3 acre uh, lot of land north of Gregory Lane. Exists a uh, single family house, porch, deck, walkway. Uh, located behind this site is a detention area and a border of vegetated wetland. Property is marked on the plan as flags A2 through A9. There's a bordering vegetated wetland, uh, red maple swamp, that consists of red maples, white pines in the overstory, and the understory, glossy buckthorn, arrowwood, and the herbaceous layer, there's cinnamon fern and sensitive fern. It's uh, Montauk and Scarborough series, which is well-drained and stony below the surface. The applicant is proposing construct a paver patio in the rear of the yard, a two foot wide crust stone trench along the patio, and a basement door drain that daylights just in the 25 foot zone of natural vegetation. There's an existing shed and pool within the jurisdictional 25 foot and 35 foot setback. All work is within 100 foot of the bordering vegetated wetland. Turn it over to the commission and through the chair to Jack. Great. Uh, for the record, my name is Jack Sullivan. I'm the project engineer and I'm the owner of the Sullivan Engineering Group. Um, I think Chuck covered that pretty well. I just add a couple more things. Um, there's a 14 inch pine tree and a, uh, three 10 inch trees that the owner would like to take out. They're within the 25 foot. Uh, BVW buffer zone. I, I believe Chuck was out there with the homeowner um, to look at those trees. The idea would be to remove those, leave the stumps, there'd be no excavation of the stumps, and the owner would make a contribution to the to the tree fund for removal of those trees. Um, an, another item in the green on this plan, they, he'd like to put up a five foot high PVC fence um, We'd leave a four inch gap from the bottom of the fence to the ground level um, to allow movement of uh, wildlife. And I wanted to comment uh, the existing, uh, no, the proposed paver patio. There's an existing concrete patio that surrounds the pool. The proposed paver patio is going to be built at roughly the same elevation as the pool patio. And doing that, um, I, have to, I had to provide some steps down to the basement entrance here, and that was the need for the area drain. So it's really a really small area that's going to that drain. It's really just for the steps. The patio itself is going to all drain out towards the uh, two foot by two foot uh, crushed stone drip trench. But 
where I'm creating a low point here with the steps, I had to figure a way to, to move water from there. So I, I show an area drain with a four inch drain that would just daylight out here, but I don't expect much water to get to that. Um, I think that about covers it. I'll turn it over to the commission for any questions. Members of the commission have any questions? Um, what's the condition of the trees? Do you know, Chuck? I, I don't know. I, I don't know the condition they of the viable? trees. Are they viable? Are they sick? They are. Are they? I, don't, I don't think there's any issues except for they may be encroaching into this. So they might be reaching out into the yard. Um, but I did not uh, remember their condition. Because I took. Um, I wasn't able to go on the regular site visits, but I did, was able to visit the house earlier that day. Um, and I took a look, I didn't, I didn't admittedly go and explore the full backyard, but I did take a look from the driveway, the existing driveway. And I, it didn't seem, I didn't see trees leaning. I didn't, I didn't see, I didn't quite understand um, the need for those two particular trees, and I just wanted to ask that question. I don't know the condition of the trees. I, I did do the survey work. I I could get some pictures, bring them in. I, I don't think they were unhealthy or dying. I think it was more, like Chuck said, they might be leaning slightly towards the house, and he wanted to remove them, and he was willing to pay for the tree fund, to the tree fund. So it looks as well, I'm just going to sort of comment, it looks as well like there's going to be additional grading in between the 35 and 25? Correct. Um, it would be a three to one slope, so it's going to be a grassed area. Right. It's grass now, um, but by matching the two patios in elevation, um, it creates a need for transitional grading within the, tw the between the 35 and the 25. Right. It's already a disturbed area. It's, it's lawn. It's lawn. It's lawn. So, does that fence, does that fence and the additional, so does the fence require a variance? So. Not the way it is? Just ask Mike and it's not a structure. So it's just grading. Right. So the fence doesn't require a variance because typically the commission allows a fence right at the edge of the lawn. With passage without tearing, underneath. Yeah. So you're not cutting down trees or shrubs. And it's on the edge of your lawn. And how is that drain going to daylight? Is that just going to be just open PVC? I just had it as open PVC. I could provide some crushed stone at, at the end of it, like a, a spreader. But it just seemed like such a small area. I, I don't see much water going to it. Four inch. Um, so what kind of discharge are you expecting from that? Very, very, I mean, this, this area here is probably three by five. It's, yeah. It, it, that's it. So. Yeah. The only thing that's going to get there is that water that drops directly onto it. It's, it's, a, it's such a small area. <laughs> or drains into it from around. It shouldn't, though, because the, the step here, we're at 97 and we're stepping down, and then you can see the grades 96, 7, 9. So the drainage is away from the steps. It's really just the air right by the steps. So uh, back to the drain, Jack. So what's the maintenance of this paper patio and will there be chemicals as part of that maintenance that could wash into that drain and be directly discharged? Well, the same maintenance of the patio, like what, what type I don't of know, like I just see people power spraying their patios and decks and what are they using to do that? And then this is a collection area for leaves pine needles and things like that. Right. Is there a clean out involved in this? Well, if, if there were leaves or pine needles that fell in there, they'd have to clean them or else they're going to have problems with water backing into their basement. 
Um, but as far as chemicals on the patio, I, Can you make I, it I, I have a patio at home. I've never done anything to it in four years. I, I don't know if people use cleaners on them or not. I don't think that's typical for, for pavers. So at least when it's being built, there'll be it should be blocked. Right. And then after that, and I was is there a sump with this? No. So it's just an elbow. Yeah. Yeah. Just a plastic drain. It, it's, it, it's, it'll be a uh, at Home Depot. It's just, it's just like a 12-inch grate, and then it would pipe directly out. I could put the pipe. I could make that pipe into the ground. Just have it as a perforated pipe with stone underneath it, and not daylight it. I, it's not going to take much water. I, it's where I had the ability to daylight it. I figured I would just so down the line that there wouldn't be a problem. If, if like you brought up, if silt got into the line and, yeah. and it was underground and it backed up, where it daylights, we shouldn't have that issue. Yeah. So I think the grate will keep the leaves out, and the stone dust could end up at the end. Um, and if it's open, they could that could be an access point to clean it. I, I think I like some sort of riprap at the end just to kind of identify it and I don't know if it has any other value than that. Do you have any comments on that, Mike? No, I, I mean, it's, it's a good thought. Uh, just the, the way, I mean, I, I think you're stopping it where you're stopping it because you can daylight it there and that's the 25 foot line or... Um, that, but it, it is kind of a funny spot in the middle of what will end up being yard, and you know, because you've got the you've, you've got the fence right there. I mean, it's either gonna just grass is gonna grow up. It, it's gonna end up being buried eventually, just because grass is gonna grow around and nobody's gonna pay attention to it. And so it seems like we want to do something there, um, just from the standpoint of a better way to identify it or or bury just. Like, you know, bury it and, I and put just, protection around it. I could just bury it. Yeah, I think that's fine. But I'll, I'll bury it and put like 12 inches of crushed stone underneath it. Use a perforated pipe because it's really not going to take that much longer. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. And I mean, ultimately, there's the, there's a deck above that area too, right? That that we're there's a what above it? There's a deck above the area oh, that, that's yep. collecting right here. Yeah. Yep. Comments from the commission? Any comments from the community? Hearing none. This obviously is not. Well, yeah, it's the trees. So, oh. so I, I guess that's the, the open item is if they're, they're looking to make a donation to the Shea Tree Fund, what is that number? Um, what do we usually do? Just four, and they have four. Four trees. Four trees would get them out, and the tree, the tree policy. I guess, you know, it doesn't. It needs to be said that we, we don't. The tree policy has been included into permits now, which is fine. But it's usually four, and then I give approval for that. And we're not looking for any kind of tree that has a disease or is health and safety. It's any four. Is that what they are willing to do? Is is donate four trees? Native trees. What he's the, the policy asks him to pay uh, into the tree fund or plant uh, four trees native or eight bushes or donate five hundred dollars to the tree warden to go into the tree fund to plant trees around town. Okay. My client was willing to pay the five hundred. Okay. I guess the confirmation is that an appropriate number for this project. Um, I don't see an issue with that. I don't either. Do I hear a motion? Well, it's consistent with what, I, and, and you will notice that that's a clump there. Yeah. So it's, it's a cluster of three? Cluster. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a cluster. It's really almost like one root system and three trees coming out of it. I labeled it as three ten inch. And those are usually pretty weak. Motion to close. A second. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you, Jack. Thank you very much. With the condition that I underground the, the, the drain pipe? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that. 
or I, th I thought you would do some sort of like drywall there so they could actually take the cover off and clean it get down instead of getting down to the back. The only reason I didn't do that is because of the high water table when okay. I get to that point. Even, even up there, sure. Yeah. Okay. But I can do that. So would the order be ready at the next meeting just so I can let my clients yes, know? Yes, Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. Thanks. Next item on the agenda is a notice of intent 270-0714, 135, 139, and 149R Howard Street map. 10, lot 75, 76, and 77, Infrastructure Holdings, LLC, and there's an update. Um, I'm just going to recap. Um, uh, this project came before us a, a while ago, um, and we had some questions as a CONCOM regarding uh, jurisdictional areas, so we hired a third-party review, Horsley and Witten. Um, we met out in the field on May 6th, and that was um, Horsley and Witten, the applicant, Norse Environmental, the consultant to the applicant, and members of the Conservation Commission. And the purpose was to review the wetlands delineation line. And um, there was one or two flags in the um, major wetland area that were moved a little further up from where they, from where they were originally put. And then there was an isolated wetland uh, discovered or identified in, I believe, the um, northwest corner of the property. And that was subsequently flagged by Norse Environmental that day. Um, while we were out there, um, there appeared to be quite a bit of uh, wetland vegetation uh, in the I believe the southwest corner of the site up gradient of a, a man-made ditch and we wanted to so we had some further uh, questions regarding that and we asked um, uh, Worsley and Witten to take a second review of that and we all met back out in the field on October 3rd and uh, Horsley and Witten are here to um, describe their, the results of their findings. Um, this is a, a public hearing, and, and what I want to do is first have Horsley and Witten um, do their review all the way through. I, members of the commission can ask questions as they arise, and then uh, I would like to open it up to the applicant and the applicant's uh, consultant. They could make comments and ask questions, and then I would like to open it up to the community again um, so it's kind of like a, a three-tiered um, review. So I'd like to open it up to um, members of the Horsley and Witten. I'm just going to stand over here where I can see everybody and see you on the screen. Um, hi, I'm Amy Ball from Horsley Witten Group. I'm a senior ecologist. Um, as Ms. Longley said, we were hired by the commission to do a third party review um, for both the, the wetland uh, resource areas at the site and also to review the stormwater management um, as proposed for the project. So my part, I'm just going to focus on the existing conditions and what we found out at the site. Um, again, we were, we were there in early May. Uh, we made a couple of small adjustments to the, the larger bordering vegetated wetland or the BBW, which is in the sort of northwest corner of the property, um, sort of a forested swamp there. Uh, we did a, a good uh, sort of reconnaissance of the entire site, found another area in the northeastern corner or sort of eastern central uh, where we thought we saw um, conditions of a uh, vegetated wetland hydrophytic vegetation of the wetland plants and uh, evidence of hydrology or soils um, and the combination of that would make a, a wetland uh, because we felt that this was an isolated area and the, the uh, town of Red has a, a bylaw um, where if it has both the vegetation and the soils in order for it to be jurisdictional in other words in order for to be able to, to um, take jurisdiction over that area, it needs to be at least 500 square feet. 
Um, so we asked the, um, the applicant's consultant if they would go back and, and flag this area up and then um, the engineers could make a, the surveyors could make a determination of whether or not how large it is. And then the area that um, has sort of generated some additional comments and some additional um, discovery this past a couple weeks ago, October 3rd, um, was the area in sort of the western, along the western property line, kind of going from the central to heading toward the, the larger BVW. Um, and this is where we had seen in the springtime uh, vegetation that was again hydrophytic, wetland plants growing in an area um, on the, the side of the yard. And then it was connected, or it appeared to be connected, we couldn't really tell at the time, um, to an area of a, um, a, this, a man made ditch or a channel. And the question became whether or not the uh, area of gradient was actually a wetland, and whether the channel or could be a conveyance, and in this case, could be. Um, an intermittent stream um, by virtue of there being a wetland upgrading of it. So at the commissions and the applicants request we went out again on the, on the third, um, it was a big group of us and we took a, a good look at this whole area um, really looking at the vegetated community which we found uh, more or less 50% or greater of wetland plants or some upland plants in this area too, and that's that 50% or greater is your is your cutoff. And then um, we took a really good look at the soils. We dug some some auger test pits with a, a handheld auger. It's about a two three inch diameter. Um, and then when we found that we couldn't quite tell the characteristics well enough to, to make a determination, we actually dug a soil pit with a shovel. Um, and in doing so, we, we looked at all the soil profiles, we checked for the, the redoxomorphic features or modeling in the soils. And ultimately, at the end of the day, found that the soils themselves um, did not have enough characteristics to qualify as a hydric soil. Um, there wasn't enough hydrology in there to support the plant community that we were seeing. Um, but it was really important for us to take a look at these characteristics and, and make this determination. And at the end of the day, uh, we concluded that this area would not be a wetland area, um, and therefore that ditch continues to be, quote, a ditch and not, um, not an intermittent stream. And so, ultimately, the, um, the conclusion there would be that the, the applicant was going to provide the commission with an up, uh, updated plan showing the isolated wet area in the northeastern corner of the site and any changes that may have come about, and I don't, I don't know the answer to this because I haven't seen the revised plans yet, um, to the ultimate project design um, predicated upon the, the, any revisions to that plan. Um, we did caution the commission that their, the soils are a bit tight in the in this area, they seem to hold water a little bit toward the surface um, for maybe an extended period of time, not necessarily wetland, but sort of a confining layer that might affect the design. And I'll let Jana talk about the stormwater um, aspects of the project. But I think that's about it for existing conditions if the commission has any questions uh, regarding our findings. Can, I was just wondering if you could go over this part of Oh, sure. Yeah, so. So um, when, you, uh, when you do a, a delineation or a view of a wetland boundary, um, I, I said that I've kind of thrown out this hydrophytic vegetation, the, the wetland vegetation. You have to have at least two of the three components of the vegetation, the hydric soils, or other evidence of hydrology, which is often interpreted through the soils. Um, and you have to have at least two out of the three in order for it to be a jurisdictional resource area. Um, we, we, we knew the plants were a lot of ferns and um, jewelweed, and those are wetland plants. There were some upland trees, there were a couple of upland shrubs, but arguably could have been about 50% or greater the wetland plants. So we felt that it probably passed that test, but then we had to go on and take a look at the soils. And this is a chart that comes out of the uh, MassDEP BBW um, delineation manual, 
Um, it's a little outdated. I know they're updating it, but they haven't gotten to it yet. Um, and this kind of goes through a hierarchy of what you should look at when you're looking at soils to determine whether or not they're hydric. Um, so Chuck, can you scroll so that you can get all of those bullets on one? There we go. So we have um, a gradient of or, that goes from like organic soils. So think of the really mucky soils that you would think are kind of the squishy, mucky, you'd step in it, you'd sink to your knees kind of soils. Um, so those are the histosols and the histic epipedons, and these are, they're, um, they're not mineral soils, so they're not gravelly or, or silty or sandy in any way. They're actually straight hydric, uh, straight organic vegetation soils. And when you have those two, or if you find one of those two, either to a depth of 16 inches or a depth of 8 inches, um, automatically that's a, a wetland soil. Um, if you were to <coughs> smell like a, a sulfur sulfuric or sulfitic smell, the rotten egg smell, that's also an indicator that you've got hydrology and probably a hydric soil. And then you get to soils like we have here, which are mineral soils. They have um, sands and silts, and they're, they may have some organic matter, meaning they have sort of a darker color to them, but that they are um, primarily a mineral soil. And when you start to look at mineral soils, you want to look at a couple of different characteristics. And a lot of times this comes down to the color of the soil, textures and colors, and whether or not it has these redoxymorphic features or models. In other words, splotches of other colors that might be found within the overall matrix or the, the base of the soils. Um, so if you have glade soils, that simply means it is a stripped soil. Um, the, the chemistry that's going on in, in, the, in the soil profile strips all of the oxidation and everything out of it because there's no oxygen in the water, or very little oxygen. And so you're left with a parent material that is usually gray in color or slightly bluish or slightly greenish, but definitely not brown or yellow or orange or anything like that. So that's what a glade soil is. So we definitely did not find that. Um, we didn't have a hydric soil, sorry, we didn't have a, uh, an organic soil, we didn't have that sulfur smell. Um, and then we start to look at the, the next three down, which are the soils of the matrix of the chroma of zero, one, and this is not going to make a whole lot of sense, but um, there's a soil color chart that you use when you're, you're identifying um, soils. And uh, we, there, there are a number of them, we were using a Munsell color chart. And on that color chart, it's basically, um, in the, the crudest sense, it's, it's a bunch of paint chips. And what you're doing is you're matching that soil color to paint chips. And if the, paint chip, if the soil falls out into um, a category where the, the color is largely a grayish color, very gray, um, that would be a hydric soil directly below the, the top layer. If it's um, a little further out into this color chart, I wish I had put that into the report, um, you have to look for some, some of those splotches, those, those models of the redoxymorphic features in order for it to be potentially considered a hydric soil. And again, you're looking for this low chroma, this grayish color, not a lot of um, color to the soil itself, the matrix. And ultimately, what we found was that we landed on this last um, last bullet of the hierarchy of, of whether or not the soil could be hydric. And uh, so you're looking again below the topsoil and what's happening directly under that topsoil. Here you have a, um, a plowed layer like most of Massachusetts, uh, this parcel in town had been a um, probably farmed in the past and so you had a very thick topsoil and so we were looking directly underneath that. Um, and we found that it met the criteria of having a, a, a chroma of, it's backwards, it has a chroma of three or more, but the, we didn't have enough of anything else. There was not enough models, there was not enough other evidence of um, hydrology in the upper six inches of the, the, the larger cloud soil layer. So ultimately, it just did not pass the test of being an obvious wetland um, soil. 
So we were able to conclude that it was not mohydric soil. And if you don't have both factors in an area where it's not um, otherwise disturbed in some way, like, um, then you don't have a wetland. And so that's, that's kind of, if that makes sense to everybody. <laughs> Long drawn out version. I, I think it, I think it does must make sense. I, I was just going to say that so, out of the three indicators the water, the soils, the vegetation um, well, you just heard someone breaking down the soil. So, there wasn't two parts to that. That was all the soil. Mm -hmm. So, there was vegetation, there wasn't water, and we were looking at the soil. and. And they spent a lot of time there going through this, these steps here. And what they were left with was getting a number between three and higher, and then looking for these little bits in the soil at a ratio of 10%. And um, they just weren't there. So, it, it, in so fact, you had they to were the two components, too. And not two we, had, we had some models, but number. not a yeah. ton. Mm -hmm. But it, then we had to go back and look a little bit further up closer to the surface. Um, and that the thing that they're looking for there is the models as redox and morphic features. And um, these things called oxidized rhizospheres, which are, are sort of rusty root channels um, because there's not a lot of oxygen in the soil. When you have a wetland, um, because the water is filling all the soil pores, it's really low oxygen. The, the roots of the plants, um, we all know that plants make oxygen, but they also breathe. They respire just like we do. Um, and in order for them to breathe, they need to take oxygen from another part of the plant and channel it down toward the roots so the roots don't rot. Um, and when you have a hydric soil, what happens with those, uh, with those roots is they get just, a, just enough oxygen around the roots so that you get that rusty color. So you'll have these little tiny rusty bits in the soil in and around where the roots are. Um, they simply just don't have them here. So in conclusion. So in conclusion, we have found that um, this particular area was um, in the, the western part of the property was not a wetland. Um, the, the larger BBW still is obviously a wetland. It has an intermittent stream there that Discharges, and I forget the name of the street. This just the W. Street? Westcroft. Westcroft. Um, so it, it discharges off site that way. Um, we're asking that the commission would probably take that into consideration when we're looking at the larger picture of the subdivision plan. Um, and then we ask that the applicant would provide the commission with these updated plans um, so that they can so they can take a look at this this sort of new information. Um, and then we had also prepared a meet, uh, an initial letter back in May um, following that first site visit where we not only talked a little bit about these wetland areas or potential wetland areas, um, but we also had gone through a fairly extensive review of the stormwater standards, which is part of the project as well. Um, I'm going to turn that over to Janet because she's our stormwater engineer. Um, and then back over to the commission, I guess, for, for more questions. Uh, Thank you. Are you in, do you want me to go through stormwater? Or do we want to? Sure. I, yeah, I think order. so. Um, what do you think? Or, or should we open it up? About stormwater light. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can do stormwater light. Because, because the final plan's not here, right. and it could affect, I mean. Yep. I can do stormwater light. Yeah. I can do stormwater light. Um, for the record, my name is Janet Bernardo. I'm a professional civil engineer with the Horsley Witten Group. And we were t also, besides uh, being tasked for reviewing the wetlands, we were looking at the stormwater management design. We prepared a letter that's dated May 29th that has a number of comments and recommendations regarding the stormwater. Part of it is requesting the applicant clarify some of the contours and spot grades that were a little difficult to read to confirm some of the information that they provided. So, uh, one of our recommendations included maintaining, um, reducing the volume going to the wetland because that's part of a Reading local regulation. 
Um, our review letter basically goes through the 10 standards for mass stormwater, the mass stormwater standards, as well as bringing in the Reading local regulations into that. Um, and so we kind of went step by step through those. The applicant will need to respond to those comments, which they have not yet, and possibly redesign some of their pieces. One of our uh, recommendations is to do a little bit more low impact development and capture the house runoff for individual houses, whether they have rain gardens or dry wells on the individual house lots to um, reduce some of the flow going to that back wetland and the infiltration system that they're proposing. Right now it's a large basin that all of the runoff from the houses and the roadway will go to. So we're just trying to capture it a little bit before that. There is a high groundwater table that they are um, providing two feet of separation. That's one of the requirements is that they have to have a minimum of two feet of separation between the seasonal high groundwater table and the bottom of their infiltration system. So they are providing that at the moment, but when um, we were looking at this site and this hole in particular, uh, there was a layer of like a clayey gray soil that does not appear to infiltrate well, or at least it's holding the water. Um, on top of it. So it wasn't through that entire hole that we're looking at right there, but it was closer to the brush and where the actual ditch is. And so we were all kind of a little bit confused about why it was there in this one spot. Um, but it definitely is something to pay attention to. And one of our recommendations is to make sure that if if there's a channel happening, because we didn't know why there's a tile drain if there's a reason why that ditch is there that is directing runoff from Howard Street to the wetland, that they don't put a house in the middle of it and, and not manage it. So if there's a, a reason for a needing of a ditch and a re needing to convey that, that water, that they include that in their design. That's kind of stormwater light. <laughs> Just from, from that standpoint, so presumably water is potentially collecting from Howard Street and going... Possibly like, there was that tile it? drain that was close to Howard Street and we couldn't quite figure out if that was put because there was some runoff coming onto the... It was in the middle of the lawn, it wasn't right next to the house, so it wasn't roof enough. We were, everybody was a little bit confused what the purpose of that was. Was it just to maybe it was flowing to that spot and they were just trying to get it to the wetland as quickly as they could? But it does seem to be there's a clay layer there, whether that was put there, was it put there, or was it just kind of acquired and that just came to be where the water kind of formed? But it definitely maybe perches it a little bit and it kind of holds it above there. But it was only on one side of the test pit hole, not on the other side. When we turned around, wasn't it? I remember it being very splotchy. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was good, like eight inches thick in that where I was on the one edge. So, but it's just something that as they're refining their design, they take into consideration so that it's not all of a sudden going to collect again in the future. I mean, there's there'll be some development that will um, change that material. It, uh, as far as that material goes, and, and I, I was at the October site visit, but I wasn't at the May. Was there a test pit or a pit dug in the area, like the yeah. isolated wetland? Or there, what, what, oh, no, what, there what was exactly? a test pit dug in the same same general location. Oh. Yeah, it was very close, if right next door, in the very, same vicinity. And it had that same, we, we were looking at the soil. Um, we didn't spend much time, it was full of water. Yeah. At the time it was May, and it was wet in the spring um, and so but we did see it in the pile of kind of spoils that was next to the hole that same clay material was there we were kind of playing with it at, at that time as well and, and and maybe this is for the applicant as well but I, I don't think has there been any indication of like that clay layer existing elsewhere on the site that would create like a poor infiltration condition? No, we or didn't it, it seemed like it was at the we channel. We did, um, when they were looking, right. they have some test bits where the infiltration basin is because that's what they really need to do is test right where they're infiltrating. And when we were looking, and Amy was walking around the property, um, 
we were doing a bunch of um, auger, and we didn't see any then. Okay. Um, I asked them specifically to dig a little bit of a auger hole where we felt that the infiltration base was going to be, and we weren't. I mean, we only went down with the auger, not very deep, but we didn't see that same material there. But it was kind of a weird material in that one spot. Just if I might add that right adjacent to this, there was a lot of debris there, which indicated that it looked like it used to be a dump. So that could have been just a couple of dump truck loads of clay that were oh, filled and then filled over the dump that had been there for yeah. decades. So really can't tell without looking at it from a general oh, point of view. Somebody's dumping clay on there. No. <laughs> dirt is dirt. Is and they're covering all the trash. Wow. Any other questions from the commission? I had a question. Um, so, uh, standard four, the street sweeping, could you explain? I don't know if you can. Yeah, F no, F I can. So, um, part of water quality and um, standard four is about removing total suspended solids. It's called TSS removal. And to do that, you there's a various percentages of sediment that gets removed from different stormwater practices. And a catch basin, for instance, removes 25% of the sediment that's going into the system. And so it's considered as 25% removal. The intention of every design is you get to 80% before it gets into a wetland system. An infiltration basin, if it has a four bay in front of it, meets 80%. But a catch basin has 25%, and a four bay has 25%, and they all have something. Street sweeping happens to also have a percentage associated with it, but it depends on the type of equipment that's used and how often you sweep in the streets. Sweeping the streets is one of the best ways to remove sediment. However, you have to do it all the time. So the applicant was taking credit for um, a significant amount of street sweeping that we didn't think was realistic because most towns are not able to sweep their streets once a month. So if they can get it once a year, that's awesome. You know, we really are glad that people are doing what they can. But to take credit, 5% uh, credit, that this is going to be probably a public roadway. And this town most likely is not going to get out there and sweep it all the time. So we just kind of questioned the logic of including it. The applicant does not need it to meet their 80%. Approval. So they can, most likely, they'll just remove it. Just remove it. And it's still at that 80%. And they'll still have 80%. Could you talk a little bit more about the low impact developments and, and this concept of you know, yeah, each It's each really great. Low impact development and the intention of that is to, to treat the stormwater and capture it and treat it where it lands. So and basically, by kind of capturing the roof runoff, which is one of the easiest things to collect, is you want to capture it, take it down in the gutters and the leaders, and put it back into the ground as soon as you can. Sometimes groundwater is really high, so you have an above surface type of a system like a rain garden. It's not that much water, so you basically take the square footage of the roof, wherever that might be, 2,000 square feet, 100,000 square feet, whatever it might be, and multiply that by an inch of rain. Because that's an inch of rain is a good storm. The other day, last couple weeks ago, we had 1.5 inches, like maybe last week it rained two days Monday Thursday it was really hard rain that was a, a lot of rain um, and so basically you multiply one inch times the square footage of your house and you put that into a dry well a rain garden something that's small it could be a perforated pipe like the last applicant was talking about he was just capturing a little teeny stoop but you can take your whole roof run off and put that into some type of an infiltration system and treat it right there on the property, on your lot. Um, it makes it a nice way, so the homeowner is the one that's taking care of it. It's not going into the street because the roof runoff is considered clean water. As soon as it hits the street, it becomes dirty. So just taking the roof runoff and putting it into a street or your driveway, and then it has the oils and the greases in them from the, from the cars. Um, so if you can avoid that and just put it right back into the ground as clean water, it helps the aquifer, it's better for the groundwater, and it, and it avoids having a larger basin at the end of the, at the, end of the run. Is that helpful? Yeah, no, exactly what I was looking for. Thanks. 
Um, any more questions from the commission? Um, we, we received a plan tonight from the applicant. Are, are you going to talk about that later on? Sure, we can. Yeah. Okay, because um, I will have a question. I was wondering if I should ask it now or later. But um, yeah. I, I don't think it's uh, so. So we haven't had time to review the plan. So I guess it would, you know, I would just say that, you know, give the rest of the commission an opportunity to review it. Okay, the only, all right, I'm, the only thing I'm going to say is on your isolated wetland, I, uh, I looked at the numbers and you go from WFB8 to WFB11. I mean, it looks right, but it's just, uh, maybe, I don't know, Maureen just, I've done it before, just put the, a different number on it, that's all. And, but, but it looks, it looks like it's in a circle. That's how Maureen, who's not here, Andy Street Civil Design Consultants. Yeah. Um, that's how she presented it to me. Just, okay. Uh, out in the woods and, you know, <laughs> skip the number oh, and, you know, that Yeah, kind of thing. no. I've done it myself. Uh, um, it's fine. Um, I'd like to open it up to the applicant. Uh, any questions, comments? I'm going to make um, a very short two-sentence statement. I'm Jamie Medea and I'm a legal counsel and environmental specialist. And the two basic points we wanted to make were thank you for Horsley Witten. Um, the report is uh, quite thorough and detailed. Um, the only addition to their report is um, Norris Environmentals put on the record, just for the sake of being clear, the plant life in the area in question, it's the DEP form filled out completely of how they do it for the vegetation. It's not determinative anymore because Horsley Witten's concluded it's not a wetland area, but they have on the record now and you can look at it if you want um, the DEP detail. The second point was, of course, their recommendations about stormwater will be implemented in the revisions to the plan, of course, uh, with including the low impact design. It's terrific. It's really kind of exciting. I'm a bit of a nerd about it. Um, that's not in my two sentences, but it's kind of fun to have a design come out really in a healthy way. So that, of course, will happen. And you received tonight the existing conditions plan updated to reflect what they asked for in their recommendation. Now I'm going to sit down and be quiet. Okay, thank you very much. Is this helpful or not? I'll take it down if it's not. Is that helpful or not? No, it doesn't. In general, we're, we're, we don't have a problem with the report. The only thing that we did was produce a detailed data plot in the area that the test holes were dug. And in that area, we get a preponderance of upland vegetation, uh, other than the fact that there's a whole bunch of sensitive fern there we come up with a predominance of upland vegetation and upland soil, so we'll just leave it at that. But we just want that information to be on the record. If I might, uh, regarding the, the design of the project, um, we've kind of been on hold and addressing stormwater concerns and, and things like that while well, we sorted out the wells, obviously. Plan was going to change substantially due to the wetland variation. We didn't want to go ahead and revise the plans and let's do it again. But we do have their comments and we'll certainly incorporate them as we, as we move forward here. Well, that was a lot of information to, to digest, um, but I would like to open it. Uh, any well, questions? We'll ask we'll, a question oh, first. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I would too. Can well, you, well, Mike, if you want to go first. Uh, actually, mine is, is and the, mine's really towards Corsley Witten. Uh, did you get a copy of it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. I know you're just getting it now. I was saying, does that? My impression when I was out there was it, it, similar to what you had in the report that there was a predominance of wetland. I mean, it, to me, it's like, what, what does it matter at this point? But um, it, does this? I mean, I'll, I'll give you some time to review it. But yeah, I mean, I, I took a look at it and immediately think that there were more ferns and more jewelry out there than that are represented on this. Okay. Um, but again, the wetland has. The end to of the day, was it matter? Has to have that two tiered. So. Yeah. Thank you. So, and I had a question also for Wesley and Witten, but I'll get back to the applicant. Uh, did you receive the original test pit data that was uh, done with the engineering department? It was six or six plus test pits. 
um, around the site. And for, the, for the stormwater test pits? Yeah. I'm, we I'm not definitely sure. had some test pits. I don't. Was that part of the application? It should have been in the drain report. Yeah, we so would have looked ago. at them because okay. otherwise that would have been our comment for yeah. the test pit. I wanted that clay layer just to make sure that that oh, was yeah. seen around the site. That was or, not that. seen under where the infiltration okay. basin is. That was the only question I came out of that. I'll look again at the at the test pit documents, but I. It's not nothing flagged underneath it. it was, I didn't notice it until we were out there at the site looking in that hole. Okay. Okay. That's all I had, Becky. Okay. Mike, you, you got it. Okay. I'd like to open it up to the community. Uh, any comments? Any questions? John Castellucio. Uh, I've got questions for both Amy and Janet. I guess. They were kind of mixed up. I didn't realize it was going to be presented this way, but um, I guess probably Amy first. Um, for the soils that were in the southwest area that are no longer considered a wetland area because of the, of, you weren't seeing the features in the soil, right. do, do you think that you covered enough of the soil area? I mean, is there a specific area that you need to cover? I mean, did you just dig one small test pit and determine that? So um, the the focus needed to be see if you can find the picture where the sort of a the two side pages view. side by side. There. Okay. So the area that we were looking at the soils, uh, we needed to specifically look at the soils where the vegetation was. We felt that the vegetation was was potentially hydric. Um, in terms of its percent cover. Uh, so we did the, the, the intensive test pit there. Um, but the jewelweed, which is a, a wetland plant, um, that, was, that was growing in a, in a larger patch. Not necessarily greater than 50%, but we decided that we would go walking down toward the wetland. We did a number of auger holes in and around that, that channel to see what we were seeing there. And, and actually the soil profiles in those areas were very different. They were um, very, very small amount of, of um, topsoil and it dropped down immediately into the sort of bright yellowish, bright orange colors, which is indicative of an upland soil rather than a wetland soil. So I think um, sometimes you have situations where some wetland plants will grow sort of outside of the wetland um, in, in an area where you might have some tighter soils and hold the water a little bit more. Um, but there, uh, again, along that channel, um, you, you also had upland plants. And that will happen, and um, I don't want to confuse the situation, but if we had decided or we had determined that, that that wetland, that area that we were looking at, was a wetland and there was this channel that could potentially be a conveyance to another down gradient wetland, this would be a totally different discussion. We would have a, a wetland and an intermittent stream, um, whereas now we have found that it is just an area of upland. Um, at some point, as you get closer to the BBW, it would be buffer zone, um, and a channel. As Janet said, we're not sure why the channel was excavated, um, but nevertheless, it's there, and that'll be you know, probably taken into account in the design. Does that help? Yeah. Um, so, so what happens to this wet wetland vegetation in this construction there? I mean, do they take it and put it someplace else or you just lose it? I guess that would be up to the applicant what they would want to do if they wanted to salvage that. That's, okay. that's their prerogative, I suppose. And then there was a the question on the, uh, on the conveyance of water from uh, through that channel. Right. You know, it, it seemed to me you know, from, from the uh, original plan, the existing plan, that um, approximately three quarters of the water from the site was being directed toward the wetland area, the main. The bigger, main. yeah, right. And under, under the uh, proposed plan, all of the water is, or three quarters of the water is now being directed to the infiltration pond. 
And the infiltration pond is right next to the large wetland system. And infiltration, in, you know, the idea of it is it recharges the water through the ground and the soil, which should keep the wetland plenished. So you don't want the wetland to dry up, but it also manages the runoff. And so that's the idea is that it keeps the, the stormwater and you want to keep the wetland protected by not putting dirty stormwater right directly into it but you don't want it to dry up. So by having the, the, it close by, it can feed the wetland through the groundwater system and infiltrating and kind of letting it kind of migrate through. And, um, and it will also, there's an overtopping that will, I believe there's an overtopping of the, of the infiltration basin. There's usually a, a, an overflow of it that, um, that it can happen. So that, so I know we've got two concerns. One for the for the overtopping. Um, I, I believe that the, the shallow soils there are very tight, mm -hmm. and and uh, I also believe that our the elevation of our properties are lower. So we're worried that with the overtopping, mm -hmm. it's it's 45 feet away to the uh, to the ordered vegetated wetland area. Also the groundwater. If this is draw, it, if it does infiltrate the pond and yep. go down, yep. the groundwater flow is to the northeast. It's not toward the the wetland area. And I, you know, I, I don't think you're going to get the water to the wetland area. That I think, and there, get. I think that was brought up a little bit in the re, with the comments. And so the redesign, maybe they would make sure that their that their overflow is going. Because there is a culvert that goes underneath. Isn't there a culvert that's underneath the road that goes under the whole under, under the, 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 yes, there the is. properties? And so that's kind of where the overflow is supposed to be directed towards. Um, but we will, when when they do their redesign, we'll keep that in mind because that's one of the things that's important to understand what other people are seeing and being out there. So we will. That, that was brought up. Um, at the very beginning yeah. of this process, and it just seems like all the all the water from the site is being brought to a low point. Mm -hmm. That same water is being asked. I mean, this is just simplified. I mean, it's probably explained by the engineers, but yeah. but it seems like it's at a low point, and when it spills over, it can do nothing other than to come out and then wrap itself around and then go to the northeast. And you can see the northeast arrow right there on the site mm -hmm. so it's not going to make it up to the culvert that's probably oversimplified but this is what yep, yep. people have asked it yep, yep. so what happens to the wetland that doesn't does no longer get the runoff from uh, sheet flow from above it mm -hmm. and you know what it's so we're, we're missing that so we're altering a little bit there if that can't be explained and then these tight soils, and I know there's been soil tests in that area, so that could be solved. This this question about it running around the corner, um, and then and yeah. these houses, because there is history of all of those houses flooding. Can you, can yeah. you want to if, if I might just jump in, the, sure. Well, one that that culvert or the, the channel that goes to Westcroft was was cleaned. The town, my understanding is, the town was out there and cleaned away some debris, so it should be functioning better. Um, and it, I don't want to like short cut this conversation, but the design is going to change. I mean, that isolated pocket there will change this pond. It's pretty just as long as you know it's a concern. Yeah, I do. Yeah, no, I to get from point A. Correct. It's been here the whole time, and we'll we'll take a hard look at where the overflow is. That overflow is activated in the worst case scenario storms. We're talking 50 or 100 years. So very rarely will water actually be overtopping out of that pond. Um, but we will take a look at that as we kind of rework that. I think that's lot four up in the corner. So we can really and do you have an under drain? I mean, maybe if you have an under drain mm -hmm. in the under the infiltration basin headed towards the wetland, that would yeah. resolve any that's concerns right. about it flowing right. northeast continuously. But right. you know, if it gets through, send it back to the wetland. Right. It will be clean at that point. Yeah, we can look. We will look at all those things to to address this as best we can. Go ahead, Chuck. 
Uh, so I've dug footers on, on my property and found clay as well. Mm -hmm. It's it's generally down like at three to four feet ish. Oh, okay, this was higher than that. Okay. But um, what what I'm even more concerned with, I guess, is is the upper two feet of, of fine material that uh, that we see on a lot of our properties back there, where we don't get the infiltration. Uh, and I'm not sure what's uh, what what the plan would be for this infiltration basin. But if, if it's got fine material in the upper two feet, it's not going to drain through, and it's going to go up and over. And uh, mm -hmm. I would like to see that material removed and replaced with coarser material. Yep. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's standard yeah, practice that, or that not. Yeah, that frequently under an infiltration basin, they have to make sure that they have some nice material coming in. And again, um, the idea of putting an under drain right below the systems, the, uh, the infiltration basin, that will pull any water away from the northeast going back to the wetland, because the wetland's where you want to feed. So they, an under drain will take it if it's not infiltrating easily through the soil, and it will pipe it quickly, because water basically takes the path of least resistance. So if there's some type of an under drain system and stones in the bottom, well, that's what it will be directed toward. So that's something that they can add to their design. Does that make sense to you? Is some, that's so the, the tighter soils that you're seeing out yeah. there, in some cases, in some places. Um, it kind of pockets around. Yeah. Uh, would that have an effect on the stormwater calculations? Well, it will have effect on the infiltration basin. This, the stormwater calculations <coughs> depend a lot on the surface material. So whether it's grass, woods, houses, pavement. Um, it also, if it's, if it's like sandy soil that's in wooded area, then it just drains really quickly. And if it's clay soil, so it's not as good, it's a more like a hydraulic soil group C or D, then it doesn't drain as quickly. And we see little pondings and sifting of water on top of the surface. But, um, but for the most part, the soil underneath, three feet down, really care about what's underneath the infiltration basin. And, and it might be um, in the applicant's best interest to excavate down enough to make sure that they have good soil beneath the system so it will really infiltrate and get into the groundwater. They, they, it's still they have to get it all the way to the groundwater. So that's... So, so that pond as it is today is essentially at grade um, because the groundwater is so high we can't excavate it out to, to make a... to get our separation of groundwater. Um, so almost by default, we'll be taking off that top layer of material that is, is tight and compact that we've been talking about a lot here and bringing back the material so it'll be a better, um, that particular area will have better soils at least where we're excavating this pond than, than they are today. So just to put, put that it up simply, there. what you're asking for will be included. Right. Yeah, they'll have to remove that because they always remove the top soil anyway because that's using it for something different they don't want to so they'll be removing that and then they'll bring in cleaner soil and that's something that can be included in the order of conditions is to make sure that that soil that's beneath the infiltration basin has a um, percolation rate or a permeability rate that's uh, reasonable for what they're proposing they're designed to be so so in line well I mean it sounds like that's right in line I mean, has there been any sort of percolation test or uh, infiltration well, was test? There was there test or did you just use the Rowles rates? You just do. So we use the Rowles rates, which are okay. typically conservative yeah. on what you find in the field. But the soils, like if they're going to bring soil in because they have to take away the top soil, they bring soil so that you can say that it will meet a certain specification. Um, we can help you with that. May I ask a quorum question? Are all four members who are present today anticipating participating in the ultimate vote? Okay. There you Thank go. You. Yes. You're quick about it. I'll jump in. <laughs> <laughs> you can have mine. Do you have more questions? So I, I have a few more questions. Oh, sorry. <laughs> So on the, I don't really understand. Is this really going to go through the, you or just a, a dialogue? Well, you should. You're really going through the chair. I'm just looking. Yes, at but me. I'm not going to be able to answer the question. So, 
But you're directing to the chair. It's I'm difficult. listening and trying okay. to. Just look at me, Chuck, that's all. <laughs> no, it's okay. If it's how you all do things. This is how we do, yes. It's been typical. So, Madam Chair. It's all right. <laughs> if this is typical, that's fine. Um, I don't really understand, you know, the uh, calculations that they do for either the mounding um, or the stormwater calculations, but but I know that when, when I looked up uh, the uh, saturated hydraulic conductivity values and the specific yield values that, that were used in the calculations, I think they were overly optimistic. And so I would ask that maybe Horsley uh, take a look at um, those numbers to see if I think we talked about this previously, and, and didn't you review that? We reviewed those numbers, but if they've moved the system, they'll provide it again, and we'll double check them again to make sure. You know, like, especially if the soils are tighter than you thought. Yeah, we'll look at the test pits that they did wherever they put their basin, and that will depend on. What did, what did they use originally? Was it a, a, a C or a B? It was a long time ago that I looked at this. I, <laughs> months ago, yeah. I, I, and I'm it was certain. it was like it was very favorable, sort of like very you know well drained, and we, I, I don't think any of us thought it was well drained. That the, that that should have changed a little bit. But we will, when we go, when they have the redesign, we will yeah. double check it again. Okay. My, my last question relates to that design point and the, and the question I had, I think, related to um, where, where the, the water was going to end up because the, the, the proposed design point showed all of the water going to the wetland area, which under, under the, the plan that they have, it's not going to happen. Yeah, and they're going to change it. Because uh, one of our questions was to kind of confirm more of the contours, spot grades, to make sure we understood exactly what was happening. Um, so they're going to provide additional information. Okay. Uh, That's all I have. I don't know if anybody else uh, Yes. Hi, I'm Suzanne Algeri, 149 Howard Street. I have two questions. Um, the first is to Amy. Mm -hmm. um, I know you mentioned in your discussion about the northeast corner, potentially, of one of the wetland areas. And I just had a question about, um, you mentioned in the report that there potentially was some disturbed soil or disturbed in a, a disturbed area. I just wanted you to speak a little bit more to that because I know the house that I'm on right now or in right now, that development was initially in a different space on that lot. And so I don't know if that would contribute at all to what you described as potentially disturbed area of soil. So in the northeast? I called it the northeast, I, you know. Again. Well, yeah, it's a little, let's assume north is straight up, it's a little bit off, but yeah. northeast is... Where you saw the sensitive fern and the um, number of the... Yeah, so the, the area that we've been talking about before was over in this area. Okay. The area where we thought there was an isolated pocket of wetland was over in this general area, so sort of northeast. Yeah, that's the um, there have been a number of test pits. Okay. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard when you're trying to, as you know, the community member, understand what you're talking about when you're not really looking at yeah like, much easier yeah, with that map but up it's there. easier with the map. <laughs> okay yes. so the area that's closest to my house then at 149 howard street so i know that there's a lot of vegetation oh, so you're, there you're around um, southwest okay yes. you're, you're southwest. southwest okay yes. got it so that area was determined not to be um a vegetation right that was the area okay that... and you mentioned that disturbed soil but that did not affect that area in your description. No, no. Okay. The distrib that was the that was conveyance, conveyance the right? Pits. Yeah, that was the conveyance. So there's that was disturbed, but the, the yeah, soil. Yeah, the conveyance is. Well, I can't even remember. Actually, have a line it's sort of in this yeah. area here. Um, that's not. Um, that that was obviously excavated at some point, so there was a little bit of disturbance associated yeah. with that. That's what I assume. Um, and as one of the commissioners mentioned, there is some some old material. Someone found a. I forget what year the car was, but oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so there's there's some there's some debris in this area, um, and that's not that's not atypical for you know areas that may have been farmed at some point way back when, um, but yeah, that that's the kind of disturbance we're looking at, and the other disturbance we saw was was associated with the test pits, which would have been part of the project design. Okay. Okay, and then my second question was, on your initial report in May, um, you very distinctly mentioned um, the potential for water runoff 
towards 149 Howard Street. And I just want to know if that was um, addressed again or if there's... That will be addressed with the applicant's revised plan. That was okay. one of our stormwater comments, just to make sure that it wasn't being directed that okay. way. Okay. And in the revised plan, has there been any um, diminished number of houses that are anticipated for development? We haven't seen a revised plan yet, so I can't do that. Okay, okay, so we can't report. speak to the revised plan. Yeah, we don't, we don't, yeah, we don't have any information on that at this point. They have to redo their design and take all these issues into consideration. Okay. May I speak briefly to the lady? Sure. Um, Your house is important. Absolutely. And it's their obligation not to add water. Right. They have no water right now. Just take them. Period. Period. That's it. They will design for that. On record. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Uh, one again? No. <laughs> Go ahead. I just want to make sure we hear from everybody. There's a lot of people here. I'm new. You never met me. And I want to make sure that I hear directly from you if you didn't get your question or your concern. I got, I got it reported from the last meeting that this is my first. Is anybody here who did not get their concern mentioned? I just need to know what they are. Well. Okay, Pauline Mastronati, 144 Howard Street. So we bought a house there 32 years ago. And when we bought, the house had gutters and French drains. And we would get water in the basement all the time. Um, Your house had gutters and French drains? Yes. Okay. So my husband, I don't know, he just figured the system is not working. So we removed it. So we don't have water now. <coughs> we also additionally planted hemlocks down both sides of our property to cool off all of the water. Mm -hmm. That was um, a good idea. And there's also, we were told, a um, underground stream between us at 144 and 140. Um, so we currently have alleviated our own problems, I mean, yeah. issues. So I am very concerned about things being disrupted. You want to stay? Uh, not a problem. I understand. Yeah. I'll just repeat again. It is so their obligation not to add to anybody's water flow on their property. That's what this engineer will design for. That's what they will review for, and that's what they will decide. I'm sorry, where, where, where is your property again? Um, I'm at 144. Do you want to point it? Directly. Across the street. Across the street. Yeah. Across the street. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Bottom. On Howard. Um, All right. I don't know what happened. Yeah. One of these two. Um, the one. No. The left. Yes, right there. The pink Maybe it's your house where that black drain tile that's coming across the property is coming from. Well, it, it sort of like right, yeah, right yeah, across, right the, across street. the street. And it puddles right. there it, very often in the winter and spring and when there's a lot of rain. I have pictures to show that there's a lot of water there. Where where the tile is? On the tile. The tile there? Yeah. Where the tile outlets, is that what you're saying? Well, she's at 149. Yeah. So there's like a straight line right to the right of her property. Right. So that's where it puddles. It floods. Yes. Yes, in that area. I think you just solved our question about how it happened that there was anything there. Well, that was one of the things that Ms. Bernardo mentioned is that no one can tell where that drain tile is coming from and where it's draining from and to where it's directing water from so all that dug up to tell where that water's coming from you can't really tell it could be coming out of the basement of that house you don't know yeah but it could could very well be coming from across the street could be coming from across the street so you needed to keep going however it might be going. Okay. I'm going to be this I live at 56 West Cross Road and um, where the ponding is, uh, uh, what 
we were the last house built on West Croft Road and found out later that during the winter, the kids in the neighborhood skated on our property. Ah, out of the basement. I have a French drain, thank God, but we had, we had others before that. But it, when it rains, we have a pond in my backyard now. And uh, I don't walk well, they don't have to put it by the chaining. Yeah, where's my one? 56. That side. That was, oh. Hmm. But you got to get it to go, make sure you get it to go to the wetland. And then oh, that comes. This is in line with that. The yeah, the northeast. Yeah. With yeah. Low to the northeast. There's certainly a portion of the site today that goes there. Drain tank so section. On will be holding some of that back. Yes, sir. Hey, I, I live at 127. The house, right? We, that's a private road. We we have to take care of the road, and, and there is water issues that we have um, that have not changed over the seven years I've lived there. Just. In my basement, not just that, but the road itself, I've got to take care of. I'm the main person who takes care of that road, and there's upkeep on that road each year. It's which, my own I'm sorry, which road? 127. It's oh, the one to the right. To the right. Please. Which one? Oh, okay. No, that one. First right there. And I'm in charge of basically, the, I'm the longer stay, so I take care of the road for myself and my neighbor to the right. And um, there are water issues there um, every year major ones, right? I take care of it. Um, we've got a drain system that works best it can, but the upkeep on it is, 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 is if you leave it alone for a major storm, a regular storm, um, there's issues. Um, obviously, this concerns me because I'm very close to this, and however this water runoff, never mind that, but also the road itself um, is, is an upkeep in the spring and the fall each year as far as maintaining it, the divots that come in there yeah. from the water, all the issues there. Um, I, bought the house. I, I, didn't, I, I thought that this was wetlands, I didn't, you know, I was told by my real estate person it was, but obviously I'm finding out um, some different circumstances now, um, so I, I need to voice my concern and that's why I'm here. Thank you. And I, I believe um, that that side of the property is where the isolated vegetated wetland was kind of, did, kind of located and classified, so that will be now shown up on a plan, and they won't be able to disturb that particular area. Yes. That's weird. Yeah. 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 The redesign, based on the report from Horsley Witten on where the wetlands are. Because that's an expense. I just want to make sure they go and do it. You're, you're not. You don't have any more concerns about make... where the wetlands are. You don't need to make a vote. That's, that's okay. all one right. order. Yeah. No. Okay. I certainly concur with uh, Horsley and Witten's report. I agree. I would agree with the conclusions at this point. I think. I thought it was well. Uh, Investigated. Spent a lot of time. Thank you for the time. Learned a lot about the soil. <laughs> well, we appreciate you being there too and kind of seeing it firsthand. Right, yeah. All right. Any other questions? I have no questions. Any other comments, questions from the commission? And here? On the aisle. Make, make a motion. Okay. Go ahead. No, from the applicant or Worsley and Witten or the community. Going once, <laughs> going twice, going three times. I make a motion to continue. I'll second. All those so in favor? Did, uh, do you think you, so we have one meeting in uh, November, it's the 13th, and one meeting in December, um, which I don't know the date, somewhere around the second, second So we'd like to go to November if we can. Yeah. No, I just wanted to know if you could make that, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, there was a vote and a second. Yeah. Okay. Great. So make a motion, so make a motion to. Okay. Can we ask if all the four who are present today think they are able to come on December on November thirteenth? You got it. Thank you very much for your service, all of you.
Um, can, can you guys just vote? Just raise your hand. There was a motion to continue. I second it. And then we have Oh you make sure that it's God. November 13th. Oh my God. Continue to the 13th. Oh, that's so funny. I mean, I shouldn't be, like, I shouldn't come the day yeah. before. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I, mean, I don't know what you said. I just wanted to make sure that it's yeah, not uh, on November 13th. Oh, it's so funny. Oh, great. Yeah. Are the kids all grown? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 My son is a physical therapist. Yeah, we get. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, we have to oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. So nice to see you. Thank you, Amy. Thanks. 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 Yeah, that would be Bill's manual. Okay. I believe the owner's right there. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's the RDA. Oh. That's the, that's the one that isn't. Right. It's one of the complete classified. It's proposed as an isn't. Yes. Well, my opinion, it was a lot of the butters for uh, any of them came in. This is Are we ready? Yes. Yep. All right. Uh, my name is Bill Manuel from Wetlands and Land Management. Brian Newman is here as well. And uh, this is the second time I've come before the commission uh, in addition to a site walk that we've had at 3 Zachary Lane. Uh, Brian's owned the property several months now. Uh, this area has always been in question. It was apparently delineated as a wetland circa 2004 uh, with another administrator. And uh, he asked me to come out and take a look at it, and I did in August. And uh, I prepared a report for him, and my findings were at that time that I do not believe that this small depression in the corner of his yard was a uh, wetland area, and that was predominantly based on, I did a, a data plot, you just heard an awful lot about data plots, and uh, the vegetation was not even close to being predominantly wetland. So uh, I came to the commission, reported my findings, uh, Chuck and Rebecca went out to actually see the site. I don't know if anybody else has been able to see it. And uh, we decided the best course of action would be to return to the commission having filed a request for determination of applicability. I'm asking for a negative determination that commission finds that this is not jurisdictional under State Wetlands Protection Act regulations nor Reading Wetlands Bylaw. Now, as I uh, reported in my uh, RDA, that uh, for it to be jurisdiction under the state, it has to border on something. And this, obviously, it's at the top of the hill. It's in the uh, middle of basically three lots. Uh, three lots joined together at this back corner here. Uh, and there's a fence and basically lawn right up to both the north and the east sides of it. Uh, so it, it clearly doesn't border on anything, so it can't be a bordering vegetated wetland. In terms of the uh, Reading Wetlands Bylaw, you do protect areas that do not, they do not have to border on a wetland, but they do have to have the predominance of wetland vegetation and wetland hydrology in the upper 12 inches. And with my two data plots that I've submitted, in, both in a very small area, because we're only talking about uh, perhaps uh, 40 by 20 or so, two data plots completely encompass that area, and both of them are negative, particularly on the, uh, the vegetation side. One plot had five upland uh, plant species that were dominant versus two, and the other had seven upland plant species that were dominant versus uh, you know, two as well. So uh, 
The information is there for you to consider. I don't, do not believe this is a wetland under the state or local regulations, and we're asking for a negative determination as such. Um, Bill, when we were out there, uh, we were searching around with some of the plants. Could you could you go over what you found that was upland and what? And I think we didn't find so many wetland plants out there. I mean, it didn't seem to have a lot of vegetation that would be helpful. No, not at all. Um, some of the wetland plants, uh, tree strata, they had uh, uh, white ash, <coughs> red oak, pignut, hickory. Uh, let me just refer to my data sheets. The herbaceous layer. Uh, we also had in shrub layer black cherry, multiflora rose, witch hazel, and pignut hickory. So all, all of those are upland species. The only thing I found in the herbaceous layer in plot one was some jewel wheat and a little bit of arrowwood. Plot one was roughly here. And the second plot that I did, which was roughly here, that again had the, because the the radius that you're evaluating for the tree strata goes out 30 feet that picked up a lot of the same stuff but the tree strata was again uh, white oak, white ash red oak it did pick up some red maple um, again the pignut hickory multiflora rose black cherry uh, burdock red raspberry in the herbaceous layer all those are upland species those were uh, those were dominant um, the jewel, we did find jewel weed. Jewel weed tends to uh, get established almost anywhere. Um, that is, it could be shady or, or whatever, but there was some jewel weed in there. And uh, as I said, some red maple along the, the uh, perimeter and some arrowwood shrubs that I thought were planted as part of that replication. They were basically right around the perimeter of it, but they did get captured in the the 15 foot radius for my plot, so I included them. But by far, uh, the predominant species up there were upland. It would take an awful lot of, of other plants that were not upland to skew that so that it was 50 uh, 50. So I had an observation when I was out there. Um, there was an immature uh, plant in the herbaceous layer, and I thought to myself that. Boy, that, that can look like skunk cabbage. And I asked you about it. Do you remember what that plant was? It had a huge leaf. That was the it. burdock. That's the it burdock. was the burdock, right? Yeah. But later on, it grows taller and what develops a, a flower or something like that. Uh, and develops those little balls that you that stick on your clothes. stick on you. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Throw, so, so, <laughs> throw some at you. <laughs> so, I don't so to the untrained eye, if someone went out there, that that could look like skunk cabbage. And I was wondering if that was part of the problem in the first place. Oh, maybe. Um, but I, I know that my predecessor had more knowledge than that. But but still, it, it, it could have led to it. I mean, it does have that look to me. So... I won't spend... I'm not going to take it. I'm not going to take anything from you two. <laughs> Because you've been out there too much, but if but if someone else went out there, I know I wouldn't have been able to distinguish. <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest with you. Our I newest member, there. if our newest member Kathleen went out there, I don't think she <laughs> <recognize> <laughs> it. I went she out there. Be able I wasn't able to make the the regular site visit. I went out there on my own. I had to go back out to the street to look at the numbers to see if I was in the right place because I looked and I couldn't find this area that yeah. was being called a wetland. Well, it's. But you saw the depression. I mean, there's I definitely a depression. I did, and then but I... That's definite. Yeah, I did see the depression, but I didn't see... But all the but I neighbors... I didn't do any auger, augering or anything else that was out there, so... Yeah, all the neighbors were notified, and I think over the years I've got, you know, I've got some calls from some of these neighbors saying that work has been done in this property, not by this property owner, but previous property owners. And I, I thought someone may show up with some, you know personal testimony about how and what they knew about it um, and I and I think that's positive also that no one's here to because maybe it was always a question mark so I, I mean other than what I said about the burdock 
Um, and I think that, you know, Bill had been out there, you went out there twice in the last couple of months. Right. So he's had a good look at it. Me and Becky looked at it, and we even dug down, and I don't know, so it was kind of rocky, but I think that was just thrown in there. There was, there was some other stuff. For me I personally, think I think it's, a, it's, it's, it's such a big question mark. It's been such a problem for, for me because I, I don't believe in it, um, and I think it's bothered every homeowner. So I'm happy this has finally happened, and I hope there's, uh, you know, if you guys have any questions, I hope it, you, you bring them up right now, but otherwise, I'm, I'm confident, have known about this place since 2011, that finally it can, you know, it can have that tag taken off, it, that, it, that it was a isolated wetland. Makes sense to me. No, I, I don't like to, you know, I don't like to make it a routine practice to de declassify a wetland in town, you know, because I think there's been too many situations where wetlands have been taken and not protected. But, I mean, this lot is in an upland area compared to the rest of the neighborhood. It might just be a localized depression. It might be the, in the most upland, most up most area upland of the whole I mean, neighborhood, right? It is. It is. You drive in, and a lot of houses from there are downhill. So this is only and a bylaw, or was only a bylaw wetland. It's <coughs> approximately from the numbers Bill thought is 800 square feet. So we protect anything over 500. Right, and I think honestly. I, my recollection is, if anything in there is facultative, it's probably because in the past we've required we've required the owner to plant it. <laughs> no, I, I'm, no, it, I'm it, just it, I'm just saying it's like, definitely altered by you know human planting and and whatnot, and you know there's I don't know there's a line of aprovity right there or something. But it's but really I, I mean I remember in my long past on this commission going there when Fran was insisting on certain plantings at this property. You know, so how did they do over time? So is that the arrowwood that? How did they do over time? Yeah. So I was wondering if you planted the wetland plants, or were they wetland plants? I mean, this is this is what. But we're that's what I'm suspecting right? is yeah. this facultative yeah. wet list. Yeah. It, could have could have historically been well, some. the arrowwood? A isn't it? List. Doesn't it rim? I was just wondering if they. If Definitely some of the shrubs, maybe a couple of the trees. Right in the water. So. There's an awful lot of shrubs according to this planting plan that just aren't there anymore. They obviously didn't make it. So if someone was trying to put wet shrubs in a dry area. Yeah, that was that was my, okay. what I was trying to say. How did how did they do? Well, I did. Yeah, well, I didn't check. But. So, yeah, I, I, th I think it makes sense based on the data. So, do I hear a motion? I make a motion for negative ter negative determination. Second. No. I, no. Wait a minute. What are we? Pause. No. Wait. Yeah. How do we do this? I was actually thinking, like, should this be an or ad? There's an three. Ad. There's three. We need it in front of us. But we try. You should it's have a, grabbed a copy. It's negative determination. It's already Yeah. The ter determination is that they don't have to apply for a notice of intent. Well, the, we there's no work. But it has to be not an area yeah. subject to jurisdiction. He's asking. Right. Yeah. Okay. He's asking for us to. And not an area subject statement. to jurisdiction under your bylaw. That would be requesting a negative Hold determination. Hold on a second. Right? Let's get the form. <laughs> you, well, your form's right here, right? So let's get the. Uh, let's get the. Yeah, but the, the determination form is not approved.
don't know, this kills me every time it does not open up. Mm -hmm. Think it will happen this time? Yeah. Good, great. So it would be N1, the area described in the request is not an area subject to protection under the Act or the, or the buffer zone right. and the town right. bylaw. So you could, you could check off N1 if we all agree. Here, here they are. Okay. Yeah. I make a motion to check off N1 and any other thing that applies <laughs> It doesn't apply to our bill. Anything else that applies. Do I get a second? So you can check off, yeah, you can make a motion to check off N1 under the Act and the bylaw. Okay. Hey, isn't that great that we got finally got an internet connection? So I'll, I'll send that to you um, and just fill it out. Seems to understand it. So in the next, uh, probably by Monday, Tuesday, next week, you'll have it. All right. Thank you, everybody. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right. Um, so the next item is notice of intent 278-0675. Oh. 364 Lowell Street, map 28, lots 157, Jensen Properties, LLC. This is actually a request to amend the order of conditions for 270-0675. And for the record, my name is Bill Manuel from Wetlands and Land Management. So. I have uh, requested that we uh, amend the plan of record to add a uh, small patio, a 10 by 12 patio, plus a deck above it to a house on lot one. So uh, we've been doing uh, quite a bit of work out there. The, the work started. Last summer, uh, we clearing started, I believe, July. Utilities in the road were in, in the later part of the year. The uh, mitigation, the stream clearing uh, from Lowell Street on down to the culvert by the railroad tracks uh, has, been, has been done. We pulled out, I bet, four 30 yard containers of trash and debris from the stream. And, uh, Hot weed area has been excavated down to wetland grade and that has been planted this spring. I owe you a report on that, but if anybody swung by and gone down to the cul-de-sac, it's looking pretty good. Uh, and we continue to monitor that for any reemergence of knotweed, weed and, and so far it's been pretty sporadic. We've been able to put a row of different tree tendons initially. But on lot one, uh, this is. Can you pull the plan up, Chuck. Sure, sir. Yeah. So, yeah, might as well start with with this diagram. It's a little bit hard to read here, but this was the existing house right here, and this was the driveway that was there on lot one. And so now, if we can scroll over to diagram on the right. This is really hard to see. But again, this is the existing house. Like that. And this dotted line here, the engineer superimposed that on there. So this is where that driveway is leading into that garage under feature. And it's to approve this 
garage add-on, and we kicked that forward a little bit as part of the negotiations and the hearing process. And apparently it was always intended that there would be a, a man door here, a walk out from the basement, and that was never reflected on the plans that you approved. So that's what we'd like to uh, have amended right now. We'd like to uh, be able to put a patio at the ground level in this location and then a deck above it. And that will allow egress out of the, the garage under and, uh, or out of the basement. And also give the owners, it's a fairly tight lot, it'll give the owners a place to put a grill or, or, or whatever, a couple of chairs so they don't start sort of spreading out into the, the no disturb zone through here. So we feel this is appropriate for an amendment because uh, it doesn't go any closer to the wetlands than the existing structure. Uh, it's work that's proposed within what was the existing driveway, so it was already disturbed. It's work that is contained within the existing limit of work that you already approved, so we're not asking to expand the limit of work at all. We're just asking to do this small feature here. And I just want to pass out some photographs of what it looks like now. You can see the erosion control on the right-hand side of the photograph. Uh, that wall you can see the the new sheathing that's there and the doorway that's framed into the basement and the sort of the, the block looking thing that is the foundation of the existing house so that's always was there and what we're asking is to create that small patio uh, right in that depression there and then the deck above it at the first floor level uh, so I believe the order of conditions allows for this sort of uh, request for amendment. I reviewed the order uh, this afternoon and actually special condition three, it states that the proposed work shown on site plans for the individual lots may be subject to change as architectural plans and other design details are developed in the future. The plans may also be subject to change by the contractor when hired and in the future as market forces or other factors influence timing of work. The attached conditions require further detailed construction plans to be submitted to the commission for approval, which is what we're doing. Um, you also, it's that basically that ability to come back to the commission and request an amendment is amplified in condition 29. Any departures from or changes to the plan specifications or data approved in this order shall not be acted on until approved by the commission in writing, and that's what we're here to do. We're here to file before this is, is constructed. Uh, I also have, I just want to show so that you're not wondering, but this is what, this is the cutout of what was approved. It basically showed grading along the back of the house, uh, which would go right up to that. That, that corner, that back side of the approved garage, and that corner of the existing foundation. And what we're asking to do, instead of having that grading as such, um, you just be able to tuck that patio right in there. So, as I said, it's no expansion towards the wetlands. Um, it occurs within an area that that's, was disturbed. It was the driveway to the existing house. Bill, uh, just with the picture right now that you would present a picture of, of what it currently looks like, maybe that uh, yeah, that's the same picture. Um, do you know, what grade is, is this? Is this the, the 192 that we're getting uh, <coughs> here from a condor or 191? Or do you know what elevation? Uh, that that elevation, from? if we go to the existing conditions plan, that elevation, if we can take it off from there, uh, 193, uh, four, about 193-ish. 
that that right there, that's the floor of the garage. Mm -hmm. and actually, it was picked up a little bit. Um, so that's about six inches above what the garage floor was. So that grade hasn't necessarily changed from existing conditions in that spot. So I, um, I just want to bring up a, that I do disagree with uh, Bill a little bit. I had gone back to our meeting from, this was back in 2016, that, that we had listened to this. And, and so if you recall, the, the addition is inside our 35-foot line, right? So it was, there was a variance requested associated with that addition. But part of how that was presented and how I recall that this was presented was, well, by right, you know, the, the essentially you had the dri existing driveway coming in and going all the way back there, that this addition was essentially going to be an improvement because it was creating separation from the driveway area. Yeah. It was moving everything away from the wetland. And so part of, I know my reason for approving that variance was, well, yes, there, there's structure going inside our, our 35 foot line, but we're moving what, what is existing driveway away from the wetland. We're, we're, and it was at that time presented that this was gonna be graded as, as you showed here, it was just gonna be graded up. Anika had actually asked if there was going to be any um, Exits in bulk the bulk uh, exits egress. really yeah, egresses in the back, um, and it was indicated no that that it was just going to be grassed and graded right up to the foundation in the back. Um, you, you know, I, to me that was a big part of approving the variance for the addition. Um, so I, I don't know that I necessarily agree that well we're no we're not going anywhere closer. I mean part of part of this addition was to get you further away. So. So be, can I, uh, well, maybe Go ahead. answer that. Actually, wanted to just to add to Bill's original comments. So, I did some checking, and so our plan that we approved was 2 12 2017, and that Bill shows that here, um, showing the grading. Mm -hmm. But the plan they submitted, the very first plan they submitted to the building department. 625-2018 showed the um, showed the like a sliding glass door um, in that area and a retaining wall and I think that that's what number three in the order of conditions is kind of highlighting and saying that's the time when you know this is when this this should have come up so when was the order issued? Remind me again the time. It's just a it's just a date. I only have the date of the plan that oh, right. that we have. So the so it was two twelve two thousand seventeen. So the order was issued sometime after that. So we saw that that there's that opening, that door currently, right? It is. Uh, it's just that's, like this picture here. Different. That's that currently changed from this what's is, there this now. This is exactly what's there. Um, now, and I'm not sure if that was cut, the block was cut, or was that the garage door? Oh, the garage door open. Yeah, so that was an existing open that they, they framed out. Now, again, Mike had, had sent me an email and he said he found the tape on, on YouTube, which is where all of our meetings go from RCTV. And uh, he said he found the exact spot. And it talks about, because this, this, this was a lot of controversy for us. And as a matter of fact, it was so tough that I think they, I think it messed up how the town would accept the road because they didn't want to come back to conservation. It was like the section of the road That's is right. private or something like that. Because we wanted to push this thing so far forward as much as it could, we wanted to know the setback from the street they're putting in to the end of the, you know, to where the structure could start. And that was the limiting factor of where this thing is located. And then Mike also, and this was my recollection too, that there was this mitigation going on and this where if you allow this, we're going to grade up to the house, which it shows in the plan, 
and we're going to vegetate that area. And I think it says that in on the video. So who who actually said that? Was it Bill or was it um, Steve Dodge? I believe it was Bill. It was Bill. So so it sounds like you know we got. We, we went into the process we usually do when a variance is asked for, and then we're looking at all the factors, and everything's out on the table, and it's just weighing the positives and negatives, what we're going to get, what we're going to lose. Um, this, this backyard should never be an area for, for people to be in. It's too close, and to open it up would, would put them in there. And I know that that's where people are naturally going to want it want to go but I think a better location for that deck would be on the side and I, I don't know what that looks like I didn't visualize it when I was out there but um, I asked the building inspector and he said the building code allows in this exact situation because I asked him to look at this property and he said uh, the building code allows an emergency escape opening an emergency escape opening under 310.1 uh, <coughs> of the building code and that could be a window. It could be a bulkhead. Uh, it could be a bulkhead. So, so a bulkhead on the side of the building, either side of the front, I think the commission has no problem saying yes to. But in the back, that's, that's where we're giving up. I mean, how much does this small patio take up? And then how much does a, does a bulkhead take up? I mean, those things may be very similar. You know, at the end of the day, the patio is not that big compared to the hole in the ground. So, uh, I, I think it's uh, it's important that there is that egress, and it's a natural place to put it. Uh, what if we were to just grade that with grass and uh, like a granite stoop or something right at the back door? So the only thing that would be changing would be the grades, but not the, the ground condition. Eliminate the patio on the deck. And you just open the door and walk out. I mean, you like to have something that you're stepping on solid. You come in that way, you have something to stamp your feet on, but just to. Uh, yeah, I don't want to do point counterpoint, but. And I think that's great, but you want to look into the future on this too. So. And anyone can speak. I hate. No. If, you, if you feel like. So speak before I speak, but. So there's a foothold now, if you agree to that, there's going to be a foothold for future development in the back. It's very hard to say no to people. If this is how we, I mean, you get it right back to why we did it, but if you allow this walkout, it's going to turn into a patio someday, whether, whether it's permitted or not. And it's a, it is a natural spot for a deck. And I do expect whoever buys this to come back in and try to do that. But, you know, ultimately the building of permit said they want to finish off everything, and I don't know what was, how it was phrased, but they meant every single spot that possibly could be finished off, attic to the basement. And I think when we were out on the site visit, there was a question like, oh, since it's going to be finished, there has to be egress. And that's why I asked the building inspector about, about that situation. Well, you know, I... I I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pipe up and just say, you know, according to the plan I see in front of me right now that shows the proposed deck, there's there's additional footprint that was not a building footprint that was not approved. Um, the driveway close to the detention basin on the left, it slopes at an angle versus on this plan, it's a 90 degree line. Well, you know, you can so there's it. some additional area there. There's some additional area where the pathway between the, between the roofed, between the, you know, just under the pathway where that um, the M line, comes in, that little bump out, but is that's additional, and so is the front deck. Mm -hmm. So I see three additional I don't know if it was areas. This, wasn't this part of the old one? But this isn't. 
So the, is it the front drag? You're right. Look at the so if you look at the line, so you can almost see, see the the dashed line that has the old driveway on it. Yeah. It's a straight. And, and it you doesn't can, encroach you can see on that the on contour. This one. And, oh, this is very different. It's this little angle to it that just takes more of our 35 foot. Honestly. So, I, so I'm not I'm not inclined to. Dave, do you see this line? No. Yep. In the original plan, you can see the building line is like right on the inside of that. Right. Room. And then comes down here and. Oops, sorry. Like and it comes down right here. Yeah. Like it's, it's, right what what he's talking about is so this, this line here. And this is all additional. And it's that. Yeah, no, I know this. So there's that this one. additional. See how, see how yeah. this comes straight and here's the seen that? What plan are we talking about? The, the line that it's still provided? It's like here. Which I think this I have. This is all yeah. additional. This is like a little taking of a couple additional square feet, whatever it is. Um, oh, yeah. This, yeah. this oh, yeah. is additional. We knew that. And then so you got it this up is now. additional. And so, so, I mean. The, Two right, of those additions right. are outside of this, the 35 it foot. Um, it's increased impervious area, yeah, why, why but there is, is also. Right? I don't understand. Well, not by it was needed approval because it's in the buffer zone, but it wasn't in the no build zone. This, this is inside the 35 foot build. The the additional garage space, yeah. Right. So I, I'm really disinclined to. I think we should stick with our original grading plan. Um, find another egress, another solution to the basement access issue. I'll leave that up to the developer to propose something that's allowed by the building department. I can say that's outside amazing. Outside of the 25. I'm, I'm really disappointed. I actually I'm, am really. What, disappointed. Is, what is your issue there? I'm not following that. You, it's no, look at the the you just discovered that you. That this building goes like this. No, even no, the no, other no, side. Left. No, it's it on also, the other side. Oh, it also goes, goes left. left too. Yeah, exactly. So. Oh, it does. You're right. It goes. It yes. goes further into the 25. It yeah. goes closer. So this so was mean, this never talked right. about, but somehow we have additional. That's well, what the plan shows. They're comparing it to this line here. So maybe if that was put in wrong. Yeah, but you had a certified plot plan. Constructed. So, what, so, so, I don't think if that was bigger than approved, I don't think it would have been a, it would have got past you. This is my first time seeing this. This new one. This new one. Yeah. yeah. So the house is bigger. It's closer to the twenty-five. Let's stick with the same grading in the back. I mean, and you know, and. We could ask for additional mitigation. So, so where's the 35 foot go compared? So this this what I is got is foot. off of what what's on the board now is what we approved. Correct. Because this is mine, and in the right. 35, it's right. The, this little that's the 25 is this little spot. Where's that 25 foot on? Oh, you're right. On uh, whatever one you guys are looking at. <laughs> well, let me go back yeah, to the construction plan. I mean, I think you're right. I, so it's not in there on the 25. It rounds off. Let's go back here. It looks like it rounds off. Oh, yeah, I can see. So, Bill, if you look at, I, let me show you what he's talking about here. If you look at, if these, well, that looks the same. These hips here are correct. I mean, the one if thing I know for sure is that the that old, driveway is at an angle. Yeah. See where that intersection is here? Is this little bit here, which appears Guarding that the this back. part of the garage actually maybe the maybe further the this way than what it shows here. Yeah, he's investigation. See what I'm saying? I, I, so that, see this point here? That's a good catch. I mean, yeah, like that, would have, that would be that point. Until, this until you said that about the driveway, I didn't notice on the... Subtle. Yeah. There's no dimension on it, but you can't really tell. Weston and Samson. See right here? This to the street. If this roof <laughs> is further to the street, then this would not be the same. Another month or two. We'll all have keys to the executive lounge. You see this Still line here, coffee. this part of the building that wasn't on this, there's another part here. What kind of coffee machine you got? Is it good? Well, we'll be there. Thank 
So yeah. regardless of where this yeah, is, we can conclude there that's not shown here. But so there's a couple of it's there's a couple of discrepancies on no. what it looks like here. Yeah. No. Agreed. I think that's what yeah. Chuck was talking about. Well, I'm just I'm just reacting what what she said, but I w I would say I would be disappointed if that's exactly what happened yeah. because oh. I do know that. Um, so I'm just gonna I just don't want you know Bill and Steve to look. I, I can tell you one thing I did approve out there after it was built. I said, hey guys, there's a porch roof over the on the front of this building, yeah. and we decided that that would be picked up on the certificate of compliance. I thought that since it was going towards the, the street, street yeah. and not toward it makes sense. I, agree that. I mean, so I under that can I, be off. I don't have the. I don't really have that, that big of a deal, you know. Except for infiltration. I mean, is that, are those infiltration? Well, it shows that it's infiltrated. Right? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. So that's not a big deal. And one one thing that I, I have to say that I I don't have a problem with is is the landscape wall that's shown there. That landscape wall was there with the original house. It was actually a, a dried laid rubble stone wall, but it was there going into that garage. Yeah, but the idea was yeah, that it was all going to be yeah. regraded right to the back. I understand that. I understand that. What it's showing what it's showing here with this grading that's in the back of the house, it's not showing that because it's showing one. One one ninety five. So it's pretty far up that that concrete wall. If the if the first floor hardwood is one ninety eight point two four, that means if that's at one ninety five, that's only you know three and a quarter feet below the finished first floor of that house. So that would be. That would be filled. That would be filled even higher than you see the existing grade coming down the, the side of the house. It, it it sounds like patio is not going anywhere, but um, optimum would be to just allow this to be uh, this grass, but lead down to uh, that rear door. At the grade. You approved in, it. At the grade in the picture. At the grade, yes. That's not what we approved. I understand that. That's why okay. I'm here for an amendment. I think if we scale back and take the patio off and take the deck off, um, a, a shorter wall, a shorter length of wall here would sure help out. But uh, that would allow that walk out from the basement. You approved a grass surface before, and you get a grass surface now. I think in line with what Chuck was saying is like just in, in the future we're just opening up that area to yeah to whether permanent or not it's, it's going to be just be used I mean I, I again in line with my take on this variance the whole time was was this addition was essentially creating that separation we're, we're now at an entrance uh, an exit to the back there like that is just inviting that to be that that space that we didn't want it to be. It's, it's getting rid of that separation that we were looking for when that variance was approved. And I, I, I really Does don't. Does that that area have to have an egress someplace? I, well, this is so the, there's he can use this he can use this window well situation that was described by by Mark, uh, the building commissioner, but. I don't think that we need to, I, I think that if it can't go anywhere else, I mean, which, you know, and, and looks are not part of that, um, our decision, if it can't go anywhere else, it would come back in front of us. But Mark thought that he's not, he doesn't need a door. He said, he didn't say he didn't need a door. He just said that it allows different things. I did talk to Steve Dodge too. and. He, uh, you know, uh, you know. I, I guess. I guess he's. There's a finished basement. There's got to be some way out of it. He, I, don't, I don't. He said he was going to leave it up to Bill. But my sense was that kind of understood that this, it's going to be tough with the deck, you know, and the patio. Um, I don't recommend. I mean, I don't recommend doing anything about this until we know that something else can't happen. And. and if you want to 
entertain something in the future when it's completely impossible that they can put it in one of these windows in because the building inspector won't won't allow that then they'll you know, bring it back. I would I, I think that's a great assessment, Chuck. I would um, agree. Can I ask another question just to play devil devil's advocate here? Just to dipstick the commission as to how they feel about a deck about the deck but no no patio, no filling. In other words, keep the grade plan where it, it was originally, but allow them to build a deck coming off the back of the house. I assume this window would turn into a door to get on the deck, and that would give them some place to put a grill, etc. Because even if we don't, let's just say for just for the sake of argument, even if we say no, you got to stick to your same grading plan. And there's a, there's a window well there. Where do you think the the gas grill is going to end up? It doesn't. I don't think it works like that. But where do you think it's going? to, Just from a practical point of view, where do you think it's going to end up? It's if probably going to end up back here. If there's no access to back there, I don't. No, think that's it's a, end up that's an there. incline. They're not going to yeah. be back there. And no, and if you graded no this, no weekend warrior is going right. to take out a shot. I've seen them build something where yeah. there's a spot to do it on the weekend, mm -hmm. but no one's going to be digging on a weekend to try to create a level spot to start doing a deck. I don't know what I'm saying that if they actually filled this to the grade that was existing on this plan. Yeah, but I lost you on where the grill's going. Because it can't go there because it's, it's, it's steep. Well, it's a, it's a valid point. If you don't give the people on a tight lot like this, if you don't give the people somewhere to hang out, they're going to make a place. Um, it, it's just going to happen over time so uh, something to consider on, on that and that's why Steve's thinking was that's exactly what this little patio would do would give them a place to put a grill what? they would use that instead of uh, making somewhere else and perhaps going beyond the you know the, the, the limit of work why wouldn't you put it on the side uh, uh, like Chuck had said towards the retention basin I mean, putting a patio out there, I mean, it, it's closed in. It's wetland, it's, it's treed, it's, I don't know. The other thing about the, the access window, those have to be within a few feet of the floor, so they're functional. The grade goes up, obviously, towards the street, so it, it's, it's easy to say, yeah, you can put it on the side of the house, but you can't because you'd have to lower the grade on the side of the house to be able to open that window. Or a window well. That you need to be able to get out and then get to the grade. So I've seen them in a tunnel. I've seen them in Brookline. They're, they've, they've done it. But I don't think that we should design that here. I, I suggested that, you know, I don't know what the commission wants to do. This is, this is in front of you. You can end it right now by saying this ain't happening and find somewhere else to it. Or you can say, go back to the drawing board and find out from the building. You know, of course, I will too. You find out from the building commissioner where else this can go. I don't, I don't with all the machinery out there, it can go, it can go anywhere. You know? My feeling on, on this is I'm not inclined to approve the patio, but maybe give them the opportunity to, to redesign and, and and go to back to the building department. So, um, so I just want to make sure. In the back of the house, do you want them to be able to have an opportunity back there, or do you want to say that's off limits? I want. I think that um, listening to uh, what Mike had investigated, that that the um, the thought at the time for the variance was to have this as a, a natural area grassed area and not to have it developed into more of the house patio and I mean I just I actually don't think it's a great area for a grill. Anything. Yeah, anything. No, uh, from I, from, you know. All right, so you would so n your no building on the back of the house. That's what I'm hearing. That's, that's my take on it. Yeah, I, I would agree. I'm in agreement. Well, how about just an egress to get out that door? Can that go 
can further you do, Can you achieve toward... that with the same kind of grading that was approved under this plan? No. Then can no. that move Actually, towards you can if you do a bulkhead. the f Lowell Unless Street? Unless it's a bulkhead. You could if it was a bulkhead. And still maintain the grade that was that was close to the grade, yeah. Right. Yeah, I have. So, I don't, you don't want anything back there. Anything so you're gonna get, you're gonna get creeping. I think that any, at, at the least, we shouldn't say yes to anything back there until it's the the absolute only spot for it. I prefer not to see something back there. If building came back to us and said there needs to be egress, there's no place. To reasonable place to put it except that location. I'm willing to hear some other solutions that's not a patio or full entrance. Um, but until that, until I hear that, I'd like to see the grading and no egress as it was originally proposed. And, and you, you can't put a patio at that grade because when you, it's the stairs was gonna, I mean, <laughs> I mean, those things are precast, right? So it's supposed to go on at a certain point because it has it comes with stairs. Yeah, you're talking oh, about sorry, uh, bulkhead. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, you can. It's got to go. I mean, it's, you're going to be directed by the amount of stairs or how that works. Yeah. So it's going to go on at a certain yeah. elevation. Actually, you actually could put a bulkhead there. That really wouldn't be that big a deal. You put a bulkhead, yeah. but if you put a bulkhead, that it would preclude the deck. Well, you put a bulkhead there. It's going to take up six by ten feet. You can have you can have everybody exiting in the back. It is going to be a big deal. It's it's well it's in the back of the back of the house. If it's ten feet out or six feet out, you are going to be walking six feet from where this is. Is is definitely in the twenty five foot area. I, I don't even think that's very functional. I think that they could maybe come up with something else. You know, and if this grading is maintained in the back, then you don't need those stairs that are proposed right next to the existing garage. And I saw that as well. That's okay. a, well, those stairs were to go up to the deck, so they wouldn't be there. If you no, no, no. I'm talking about the stairs between the garage and the basin. Here. Oh, those. We can just continue the contours as recommended. But So do we need to vote on this, Chuck? Well, I, I'd like to continue the, this matter because I, I need to go back to Steve and, and we need to investigate if there's any other egress. I'd like to sort of clo run that okay. down and close out that sort of avenue. Okay. Do I hear a motion to? I make a motion to continue. 13th of November. So the 13th Second. of November. All those in favor? All those opposed? All those abstained? Abstain. I don't think I. You're I abstaining, would have, continuing yes. this? Yeah. Okay. Do we need a. Need a quorum. I don't know if you need a quorum. Find a the CEP call. So we can't. We so quorum. we can't continue it. So we need a. We need to vote on it. Is it a majority I'm just quorum present? Yes. Okay. So pass. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If we get in trouble, they can put me in no. jail. <laughs> <laughs> you can, uh, we don't know the public meeting well. Thanks, Bill. Thank you, Bill. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, uh, Administrator's report, Matt Millette. I couldn't get, oh, it's open now. Trail work scheduled for 1026. Is that it? I'm not going to do it, but it's over. But anyways, I had the I had the link to the, to the video. I didn't want to reply all, but I figured you could send it out to everybody. Yeah. What video? No, no. Yeah, we don't let's need let's that. move on. Can we move no, on? No, I, I, I would play it if, at, when Bill comes back. I'll play it. If, if, when it, if it's continued in me. Sometimes this thing doesn't open Word documents, and sometimes it does, so it's... Driving me crazy. I, I can't find Do my. You have uh, oh. So this didn't come up, but I think, and I'll I'll write to Bill an email, and I'll just 
just say we, we really need to know where that building's placed. If it's if it's a couple feet over and a couple feet back. It's like catch Mike. <laughs> no, it was uh We got it. Got it. Well he also said that that was just a porch roof between the two, but that's not shown on there either. Is what? The porch roof between the two bump outs that are towards the 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 not not towards uh, Lowell Street towards yeah, the, the sidewalk. The sidewalk. I don't know if that's true. No. And if you look at the plans, it, they're different. I don't know if that's true. I, I saw a big. There's like there. a deck, and then there's a, there's a, port, a roof there. Yeah. Between those two bump outs. Yeah. That's not shown exactly. on the plan either. <laughs> it's yeah. Yeah. At the meeting. But, yeah. Anyway. I mean, it would be nice to get an as-built plan that, that isn't made in such a way that it's deceptive. And, and I think this coloring and lightening up tones and, and, and it's a way just to make it so confusing. And, and on this one, there was like three things on one full-size piece of paper. Yeah. It, 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 it just drives me crazy. And, and, and yeah. The really problem does. is, though, and, and Mike, you can attest to this when you've seen some, I'm sure, some drawings depend upon what CAD platform you're looking at. You can see it like it's sticking out with a neon sign. You print it, it goes, where did those lines go? Yeah. They disappeared. Yeah. You know, and it just, when it goes from a, a screen rendering to a print, it just disappears or it becomes very muted. Okay, Chuck. So, What's happening with Millet? Yeah, so Millet's. Uh, well, let's, uh, uh, we, there was another trail day, had a uh, good turnout at that, at that trail day. Um, they got, so what they're building is they're building a boardwalk bridge over the Abajona. So it has to be wheelchair accessible, so it's flush to the ground. And there's something to the effect of 10 feet of boardwalk beyond the, the structure that crosses the Abajona. So it goes down about eight feet and it, then it turns and then goes down another six feet and meeting up with the path. On the other side, and all the deck boards are in place on one side, um, and the path on the other side is um, the path on the other side or the the continuation of the bridge has one section. It still has to be brought to the ground. It's, I gotta tell you, like if you're framing a deck and you're out there doing this stuff, this takes so much longer. It's incredibly tedious of all the work this has taken. So it's, it's a good project. So the Trails Committee is gonna meet in the upcoming weeks and set another work day and I'll let everybody know about that. Austin Prep. I went out to Austin Prep for the pre-activity meeting, and um, this is uh, this is a picture of the entrance, the construction entrance. From now this this area has stone, stone in it. From what side? Like, are you we're on in the, the field. ball fields and you're going? Okay, the, we're in the field. Back. Thank you. Looking out. Um, this is along where the replication area is going to be. And you can see off in the distance here, where an abutter had cut down some trees, uh, and then Austin Prep cut down some trees. It's 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 open, um, and they asked me if I they if I could cut down this tree here that's leaning. It, I don't know if you can tell that it's lean. It's it's over, but it is leaning into the field. And what we've done is we've established a tree bank, and they have one tree in it now. So. Maybe maybe that's an opportunity for her to to put it on the bank over there. Um, next picture. This is looking up uh, the north side as you come in the construction entrance, which would be to your right. And as you can see, the erosion control and hay bale is not set at the area where these stakes represent no man's land where you can't natural be out there yeah not the zone of natural vegetation but the zone where they were going to give back some land as mitigation for this project so this is another mitigation point that they had so i asked them to move that erosion control 
out to the fence or install more in front of it. So it was that compacting, as you can see the, the yeah. tracks there, I didn't want it compacted. Um, so I, I don't understand what they were giving back there. They're just going to let they're that, gonna let they're grow. never going to mow that again. They're going to put up a fence that goes along those stakes. That's what I thought. It was going to be natural vegetation. No. But they're planting in there too. Right. So we don't want them driving across it and messing it up. So since they're not working in there, the erosion control, you're making a face like it's, it's you don't get it. But I do get it. The limit of work is at the stakes. Right. <laughs> Help us. <laughs> just keep going. Okay. Do you want to take this one? Or you, got me, you want me to do it? No, I wasn't out there. Okay, fine. Well, hey, there you go. Oh, oh well. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's here's that wonderful <laughs> stuff. There you go, Plenty uh, of it. Here's that. Uh, here's what they put so. across the causeway, which is really nice. This this material it's is great. Well. Yeah. Yeah, they proposed it, and it really worked out well. It it expands a little bit over the edge, but not much. And it's it's very protective. And how they have this set up, I mean, they can just get, you know, some power brushes down here and brush everything back. But if, if anything goes in, did you get to see any heavy equipment go over it? it did yeah, there was a truck. It didn't even deflect. Oh. Nothing. It was it was pretty good. There's a little somehow on one of these. I was looking at it. There's like a belly in it, but I, it it's just there. Mm. So. These things are rented. You can't buy them, according to Jamie, who works for Quirk. And um, they would like to buy a couple, but it's it's not something that they're selling. I think so this advertisement that. showed a, a 300 ton crane on marshy wetland. Yeah. That's something I, I wouldn't want to be the guy driving the crane on that, but I'd like to see it. Oh, Myers has this huge, I don't know, shredder, a tree shredder out there. Huge. Absolutely. It's, it's like two truck, three, two or three trucks, like wide, and I don't know, maybe 25 feet tall. It's just incredible. I have a picture of it, I didn't put it on hand. Um, I was wondering if uh, Glenmore, Howard Street. So here's, if you want to do, I'm going to let Becky do the DP report last, but maybe An Anika brought this up to me and asked me to talk about. Um, Imagination Station, where Quirk Construction actually did another field at the at the baseball, uh, another tr another uh, synthetic turf field at the high school. Turf too. So it ends up what ended up happening is we is weren't told about. It's at the high school. Uh, so the jurisdictional area is the headwaters of the Abajona River. Uh, pretty much, it starts there. Some people think it starts further up. Uh, so it's either there or somewhere else, but it's not in our jurisdiction. But what's in our jurisdiction is what, what ended up happening after the first day. They needed a place to uh, lay down their material and stockpile material. And this, this place has become the stockpile area. And you may have some better pictures. I just took a picture showing how miserably clogged up that stream is. And it's, it's pretty pitiful. Some heavy but, machinery. Yeah, there you go. But someone backed up on this. But you can see these stones here at the corner, and they are still in place, and they've established whatever the zone is. No one's gone beyond it except where we have this little bit of spillage beyond these stones of this mound of dirt, which has been there a while because it's pretty vegetated. So... All that's supposed to be cleaned up. So I didn't send you this? These huge ruts? You may have, but when you send, when you text them to me, I cannot do oh. anything with them. That's what it is. <laughs> Sorry. So I drove by, and the whole, as you drive by, I can email it to you, the whole back area is just rutted up. Yeah. Like between the sidewalk, and the sh even the staging area, like somebody decided. That's what I found. So I don't know. Go in. I don't know where you were, where those were. I was driving. I was leaving Coolidge, just heading towards the YMCA. I look on my left, and it's looking. Those might be the same ones. Horrible. 
I mean, there's ruts there. It didn't. So, I have to say that it was, it wasn't. For, for this kind of an area, I wasn't surprised. I, what I was more surprised about is they're letting students park there and they got this heavy equipment moving in and out and it's not cordoned off and there's no you know, fence and stopping people from intermingling and things like that. So I thought that was surprising, but for us, they, so we went to a uh, Monday morning meeting and they got the word. So I haven't been down there, but if you walk in the dog tomorrow, uh, you know, get, send me the report. Be a long, long and walk. I'll probably okay. check it out myself. So that was that. Um, and then the only other thing Why that I wanted to report on. What's Imagination Station? I feel like I've heard that. That yeah. parking lot, that dirt parking area, oh, used old, like, to be an yeah. old. That's okay. There used to be a park. I remember that. Used to okay. be an, Now I understand. Until it got overrun with rodents. Yeah. Ooh. And they had to. The health department said, you got to take this down. Kids can't play here. Got it. That's why I've heard of it before. So we got I'm sure there were. So I don't, I don't feel qualified to do the DEP report because I wasn't there. So maybe, Becky, can you take this over? I'm going to put up the... Oh, you weren't there? I, I ended up not going. Um, so we have the letter, we have the report, and we have a couple pictures. Yeah, two gentlemen from... So hold on. Let me set it up. Hold on, let me set it up. Here's the report. And so we every time we do a DEP report, we have to. <laughs> okay. He wasn't there. It was a different one. <laughs> this is DEP coming to the rescue. <laughs> there were two. This is him at the site. <laughs> Those. We're on TV, yeah. you know. <laughs> I, I just felt like people could relate to this. Yeah. I, I'm having thank you trouble for the, relating to it. Thank you for the recap, Chuck. I'll this is all, all I could add. Visit. I wasn't at the report, but I felt like... You I knew know, what happened. I know DEP was there. DEP, two, two, two of them showed up. Uh, Dave came. Um, we showed them the uh, <clears throat> proposed work and uh, the wetland and that we had agreed with the wetland line. And I showed them the um, drainage ditch that is right off of uh, Patricia de Bebne's property and then it is culverted underneath going through her property. Um, we talked about the, um, the tree removal and uh, some of the trees that were cut and then what replacement trees we're putting in and um, showed them the edge of the uh, parking area, the proposed parking area. And they basically said, you know, this is very straightforward, but they have to, they have a policy of whenever there is a, um, a, a an appeal, they actually go out and, and look at it. Um, they were very surprised that the appeal was written, handwritten. They, they um, several of them kind of commented on that and they, said it's very unusual. So um, the bottom line is that they uh, are siding with um, our... Their report. Our Does their report say that? We haven't got it. Yeah, oh. we haven't got anything yet. We haven't got anything yet. Oh, that was just... And I, th I thought I heard them say a superseding order of conditions. I'm not sure. Yeah, and so I wanted to ask you what, what did they ask um, Jeff Brem to add to the plans? He had... Um, drainage calculations for the additional drainage sump that the uh, engineer had asked him to put in. Because the, the engineer did not want him to drain that particular parking area into the existing drainage um, uh, oh, there's a that's there. They, so he added an extra one. Is, see that line and that other round circle, isn't that yeah. what it's going to Is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. But it wasn't them asking, that was engineering, wasn't it? Engineering asked for it, yes. Yeah. It's a capacity. So the whole thing with engineering is the site as originally set up had the capacity to handle this yeah. spot. Sleeping but there's some quirky thing 
in the review process that makes them look at only what you're putting in. So they couldn't connect this new piece to the old piece, although it could handle it. And that's, and I think Jeff had a hard time kind of getting that, and it took several, several there tries. There was also another thing that did come up um, that Jeff mentioned is they had to go get a zoning variance because he didn't know this, but part of that piece that they're, they're right put, right. putting in is a different zone. zone. Yeah, but they allowed half the building and what's in the back. So I don't. That's not up to us. But no, no, but it's just it was brought up. That's so, what I was told um, from the staff planner is that planning removed these two snow storage areas, or they didn't want them to be allowed. So snow has to be removed. Um. <laughs> I can start piling. I didn't get that. I'll, I'll, I'll ask. I would assume that every place they were putting it before can still be used, and then at some point when that doesn't work, they'd have to remove it. Wasn't but it right my there? impression was that the whole, this all started because the removal was putting it where those plants were supposed to be. Right. right. So to create a snow storage area, it's actually something that can be maintained. It's designed to actually accept the snow right. and it's not just put a circle on a page and yeah, say that's where, and say that's where it's going. It's not, it's not, yeah. So it's probably more suspect of what's happening with everything that's in the snow during the winter, wherever else it's going. These are the two places that could have been maintained because they're in the operation and maintenance plan. Plus, the water should be closer to the wetlands. So for those couple of reasons, it's very similar to what happened at the artist. I say artist, but it's artist. 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 The artiste site, which was, used to be Eric's greenhouse. A lot easier to pronounce for some most people. <laughs> so, uh, so anyways, that we did the same thing there, and they have a snow storage on crushed stone. It's worked for the last couple of years, but I just wanted to let you know that. So I don't know when DEP will come up with their report. But I'm sure I'll be flagged down when it comes when, in. When, so DEP say they do a superseding order or whatever they're going to do. Uh, is there anything on our end that needs to be done? Because there was still still an appeal against our bylaw, right? Our, our was the appeal just to? Okay. So we'll have to. They'll have to amend their our order of conditions to match the so DEP can just make a recommendation that they amend their order of conditions or make a plan change you know it's probably what it's going to be and that they accept it and that it can go like that or they can do a superseding order and which would mean we would still have to make a plan change but then they would monitor the site and so would so would we and they need to get an order of conditions no they need to get an order of conditions from DEP and a certificate of compliance from DEP along with us. So. Chuck, I had a question about um, damage done. Just to follow up about the damage done near the Millet Bridge mm -hmm. and what's happened since the last meeting. So since that last meeting, I've sent out a violation notice, and I've met with, uh, I don't know if we were saying his name. If someone else says his name, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with it, but I met with a person yep. and had a long discussion with them, and, uh, you know, I just told them that, that, that we totally agree with surface debris. And it makes sense, and we could characterize you as a good Samaritan doing that. But if you're walking down a stream and you're creating a channel and removing vegetation because you think these things should be there for the stream flow, 
you know, did you know that when you remove vegetation, it's more likely than not that, that invasives are going to grow in? And when you're taking out the organic layer and you get into the sand layer, you're, you're, you're basically draining the tub. Um, you know, to side cast this stuff is, is, you know, all this habitat is gone. I mean, what was out there? Button bush or uh, winter berry? Or cattails. Um, Cattail. So that's all going to be. So in, in 10 years, we're going to see Phragmite. There's, like there's going to be a strip of Phragmite straight, straight through that area. So I took the time to explain all that and tell them about the DEP finding schedule and how that works. And uh, I, you know, I think that he was talked uh, to by the DPW also, because uh, he had mentioned that a couple of times. He's not an unlikable guy by no means. He's He's, uh, you know, he's doing something good, and he feels, I got to tell you, he told me a story that him and his son went out on Father's Day to take care of some someplace. That's what he, his, de his son did to for him on Father's Day. So, this is, you know, this is who we're dealing with. So, I, I, I think that he understood my position, um, and... You know, just keep 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 an eye on it. So that that's out there, and and I think that the DPW has has an understanding of the situation too. <coughs> how about DEP? How about DEP? De I still have to wait for a little bit of time and get back to DEP. Um, DEP wants to know that we sent the violation notice, and um, they also wanted. Uh, they also wanted the town to know that, you know, if they suspect someone's doing this, that they shouldn't, they shouldn't help. So, picking up a lot of, continually picking up a lot of plants at a, at a spot might, might be something that would trigger a call to the conservation office. So. <coughs> Um, meeting minutes? Yeah, I sent out all three sets. Uh, the latest one was just recently, 828, 8911, and 10-9. I looked at 10-9. I didn't have any issues. Anybody look at any of them? I looked at 10-9. Yep, I'm fine with those. Make a motion to approve minutes for 828, 911, and 1009. Do them separately. 828 only. Second. All those in favor? Make a motion to approve 911. Second. All those in favor? Make a motion to approve 109. Second. All those in favor? All right. All right. So why? Uh, the only other thing that came up is some of us went out to Annette Lane. Uh, it's from LAC Environmental. And they gave me a call and said they wanted to uh, send in. They, they were concerned about when they could get an application in. So they wanted us to go out early before the application comes in to uh, review the site. And when we got out there, we didn't have plans. We didn't have data sheets. And... What else didn't we have? Yeah, we had but we had a lot of people. We didn't have plans. He gave us plans. He gave us one plan that I held. No, I had my own. No, there were no plans handed out for that. No, we had more than one. There were three there were plans. Sheets, there were three sheets of plans, right. but they were all this, they were, they were different aspects. Oh, oh. so maybe I just had a different aspect. Uh, oh, okay, with, right. And I thought I had all of them. You were carrying there was a, there a child. Was a, yeah, right. you were carrying Maybe the baby. Where was I carrying uh, yeah, the plan exactly. about carrying the baby? What are you even talking about, guy? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what I had. <laughs> yeah, you had a plan. <laughs> so I, I just think that, you know, it, it was a good sight walk. We, we, we all took a look. Dave was there, Mike and Becky. Enough of us, enough of us looked at it to probably not have to do that again. But the flags are out there. We did move a few. Um, I don't, I did get the submittal. 
but they didn't update the plan. Did you ever find the old? You said... No, I talked to Peter again. The only thing I found was a... Uh, I found two things. I found a evaluation. I don't know when it was back in 2006. I, I think that's all I found. Because... I, because the next thing I found something different on, on the next project I want to talk about. So, so anyways, let's just remember that, that in order to say yes, data sheets, because I know that you like to review the data sheets, so do I, and then a, a plan. Should would we make start sense. making it a standard that, and I think we've talked about this in the past, because I, I thought about this with um, Howard Street, that the location is indicated where the, the data sheet's taken should they, from, right? It should be on the yes, plan. Yep. Like this is data sheet one, point one was here, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm getting lax because uh -huh. I like the DEP data sheet. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's I feel like you we've really just, gotten that's that. just that's an assumption I make that I expect to see that. Well we never do. I know, I don't think we never but, but never Bill do. Millette did it for Zachary. Bill Manuel. Thank you. Bill Manuel did it for Zachary. The work need to get all messed up. Um, and I circled for Howard Street all the test pit locations that are shown on one of the plans. So I noticed. But those test pits were for drainage, not for, those were not where they did like their data sheets. I, I think they were data sheet. Uh, yeah. Right, I know, but some of the. Yeah. Yeah. Are right, no. the coloring naming is the they're, same? Yeah, they're not picking up those areas. I don't. I don't. I don't know what. But you're right. How that works. I mean, it's kind of hard to say that we made a decision based on soil samples when we have a sheet that doesn't show where the soil samples were. Agreed. It's hard to say we're justified. Now, can I have, ask you a question about the the bridge over at Millet? Um, I went out and I looked at that and the two ends of that. And the uh, are they going to cap cap the the rails of that? Because the welded wire is actually sticking up out of the the rails of that bridge. Yeah. So you don't know whether. No, I know they're not going to do that because they don't want their. You know, when I saw it, I thought, mm, you know. I wonder if they didn't cap it because they don't want people like walking on top of the rail across or the bridge. Sitting on it, yeah. Or sitting on it, but the the edge of the welded wire is actually it's sandwiched in between the two by fours and the two by sixes, and it's it's sticking up proud of those boards. So if like you if you were walking along, you'd be digging into the ends of that welded wire, which would cut your hand. Yeah. So they got their they got that plan off like the forestry forestry plan and it's a beefy beefy thing and they are putting a cap on it but I think with that wire sticking up they have to modify the cap somehow right. so yeah they I mean that all they have to do is put like a router router strip down, underneath yeah, it they're using decking board so if, yeah. they probably should use two by six which would allow I was just concerned down. because you know I was walking across it and I put my hand there and went whoa yeah. You know, and it like Wait, so they worked out there last weekend. Did you, did you, was it? Did you go last since Saturday? Since just yeah, four last days ago. No, I was yeah, there so last. I, I was there last week. That might be something because that was part of our first order. We had all the stuff to do, everything on that. So, uh, I'm not saying that it's done, but it, but it could have been. Yeah, it could it could be done. I didn't know whether they were. Nothing Not else is getting Not specifically railing. going to put a cap on that because yeah. of you know people not sitting on it, people walking on it, or whatever. And that wire is dipped in galvanized yeah. material, yeah. and it has like each square has little sharp things right. on it. And I was I mentioned those, but there there's less and less each day because they're they're just falling off. Yeah. So and it just sticks to the wire. So that's. I, I think they, I think they have it. I mean, they worked a lot on the trail, and there's, there's like a 20 foot bog bridge and a 40 foot bog bridge that has to be done next. It's a lot, a lot of. It's gonna be nice to take a mountain bike down there. The crossing bridge is pretty nice. Yeah. They did a nice job on it. Yeah. I wouldn't want to carry those beams across there though. I have a video. I have a video of those guys doing it. I showed you guys, right? Yeah, you showed, carried it in. 
I, 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 off like the trail. You know I'm who saying. were? Andy Friedman. Really? He was on it. He stayed all day. Thank you, Andy. Yeah. He was. Yeah. He. I was like, wow. I can't believe that. You know, the guy stayed all day. You know, I stayed all day, and Will and Kim did too, but not on the select board. So that was. I thought that was amazing. Next project is on Main Street. It's um, 582 and, no, no, what's that one, 2 Smith Oil, anybody? Oh, Smith that Oil. one that they came in? 285? Yeah. Two eight, it's like 285. They're going to be filing soon. So they'll, they should be at our November 13th meeting. So that brings up a great point. Becky may be leaving soon. We need to watch who's around for quorums. If you're not going to make it, we have to tell the applicant because the vote can't happen. Now, you, f you four, for this Howard Street project, are the only ones that matter. It has to end before you leave. Yeah. So, <laughs> somebody right. can, I thought somebody can watch you the can phone meeting. in. Couldn't I someone thought, watch the meeting on the I thought like Carl or Bob could watch the YouTube video, as long as it's only for one meeting, no? I don't know. I'm not sure. I we're going to have to, find, we're gonna have to find out if that's been approved here in town Reading. Clerk. Okay. Check the so, town clerk. I thought, there was that's a, I I thought this came up. I better hurry up. <laughs> I thought this had come up in the, in the past, um, that you, you could catch up. You, you can only do it once. So if you miss two meetings, you can't, but. What about Bob? He was out on the site visits. Did he miss too many meetings on Howard Street? No, because they haven't been in here. They've been continued. Well, they, they were in here the first time, right? I mean, officially we should. I guess we need to go back and take a look at. What about Carl? Well, Carl seems to be the likely person that could watch a video and then stay, stay on. But it's, it's likely to be at least two more meetings. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're not quite, I don't think this next one's going to be the last one. Um, why, are we sure we can't have a second meeting in November? Yeah. Why? The, the second meeting, so the, the meeting rooms are scheduled for other other boards and we have it on the second and fourth. I mean the Wednesday is like the night before Thanksgiving or something like that. So what? I will not be around the night before Thanksgiving, sorry. Yeah. Well I'm here if you guys are. Uh, don't we have a problem then? Because we won't have, she's right, don't you have, have to have consistency with people that have been with Howard Street all along? So I think that if, if push came to sh shove that you could start um, the process all over again <laughs> and without, without refiling. You just tell everybody who comes in just everything from the start, you know, like the new members or whatever, and then you could do it that way. And that's been done before. I'd quit. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you I'm going to quit. <laughs> well, if he quits, on TV. So, so we're because doing this to, to gain that's, a member, that's, that's, yeah. but we're actually going to lose a member, too. No. <laughs> Can I make a motion to adjourn? Is I'll there a second? All those in favor? Yay. They said I won't listen to that guy again. Oh, you don't like him? <laughs>